What? Per persist. What are you doing, you useless traitors? Stop. I think it's about time I start making my own choices. Yeah, we're gonna persist you. Stop. Oh, we about to have ourselves a little problem here. Yo, yo, yo! What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Wingate TV. I am back here with Do Not, and I mean Do Not, by any means necessary, take this cat home. It's been a while since we tackled this damn cat. And if, I'm, if I remember correctly, he's nothing to play with. He, it, I don't even know if it's a boy or a girl at this point, but... We left off at a pretty good, I don't even remember actually, but I think it's time to finish this. We have, how many endings? We have four, 15 endings out of 40. So it's safe to say we're going to be here a while. But we've gotten a little bit of, you know, backstory on this cat. I mean, well not really, it's just this dude's taking over this cat and then just, in the end he dies or something goes wrong. But... I don't know, it's like in the between stages, there, there's been like some text saying about something. I don't really understand, but it's time to finish this bitch once and for all. <sighs> Let's do this. Alright, you know what? We're gonna not take the cat home. I think because, like, I don't remember exactly how many, like, the endings I did and how I got to them. But if I remember one of the... Yeah, I never take that thing home with me. Um... Let's play with the cat, because I think there's one of these that I didn't I didn't do. Uh but what? Um Check pockets. I think this is what I want to do. I wanna freaking I yeah No. No I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Huh? What the freak was that? Maybe that was because of something I did already and there I don't I don't even know what that was for. Uh, this is what I wanted to do. The phone. To take the pictures of it. Because. Something. Really. I think it was. If you don't check the phone. Ignore it. That I think I checked the phone and I saw that crap and he hit his head. I'm going to ignore it. Alright. This is probably all new. Oh, it's just going to keep going. The phone vibrates instantly. Over and over. But you just can't look. You keep your eyes squeezed shut. Your fingers tightly gripped the sink. In your mind, you beg whoever or whatever this is, just stop already. Yeah, this is annoying. Please, 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 just put me out of my misery. Don't ask for that. You mutter this quietly. You don't really mean it. You don't. But um, but as the words take shape in the darkest corners in your mind, the phone immediately stops vibrating. You think that this would give you relief, but it doesn't? What is he trying to say? But you only feel dread sinking heavily into your stu- Why? You said you wanted it to stop. You could feel eyes on you. You could feel puff- Puffs of air on the back of your neck. Damp and deep and slow. That's kind of disgusting. You take a deep breath and open your eyes. You look at the mirror. There's nothing. There's nothing, right? Nothing. Whew. Nothing. You peek around the room. Please don't be something behind me. Still nothing. Nothing at all. But you know. You know that something is there. I don't. I don't see anything. Waiting to be acknowledged. For you to accept the fact of its existence. Only then would it deign to give you peace. To free you from a life of constantly looking over your shoulder. That's about to make me look over the shoulder like a fear in your own image. Your own reflection. You can feel its patience, limitless and old. You can't win against it in a war of attrition. Your lifespan will long expire before it tires of you. So, so what? You close your eyes and what? And accept it. So I just accept to die? So he was right. Something was there. That cat was there. 
as your head is severed from your neck. You're filled with peace. Grateful that at the very least, you never had to see it. Whatever it was. Huh? Okay. Ending 31. Headshot. Was that one I had before? Or is that one that I... No, that's definitely not one I had before. Headshot. Yeah, he really took my head off. Oh, boy. This cat. I never saw him in that one. I mean, other than the phone, but the, that don't count. We, we're just going to keep going. Um, Where's the one where we take... No. We got to go somewhere, right? I'm trying to figure out where, where we go to, like, the park for the... uh. Leave him. We got to leave him. You don't think it's a good idea? No. We saw this. Ignore. Sorry, I'm, I'm out. You need to nip this in the bud and get on with your day. It's what's best for both of you. You leave the alley, continuing your way. Wait, what was I doing? In the excitement of dealing with your furry dilemma, you've forgotten you still had decided on what you were going to do for your day off. I think I'll... Oh, okay, I see. You know what? F cats. We're going to a dark park. Dog park. You just try to take a stroll in the park or something. The only one within walking distance is a nearby dog park. You think it'll make you feel better. First you see get to see a cute cat today. Now you'll get to see a cute dog. Dogs are better. Several of them, in fact. I might regret saying that in a little bit. The park is bustling with owners and their canine companions. Playing frisbee, fetch, running, jumping, even napping. Such cute... Whatever. <laughs> what? You can't just interrupt my talking with whatever. Like you want anything to do with those mangly mutts. What? Bro, who's saying that? That, that, that? What's wrong? You didn't think that? This is weird. Like, who's talking in the little text? Like, I've been noticing those. Even I, even if I had to look back at the other videos, it's like little text that somebody else is talking. That's not us. You decide to move on. The dogs are all so adorable. You want to pet every single one you come across. But you know not owners are cool with strangers just walking up and manhandling their pets. True shit, though. Not all dogs appreciate it either. So you stroll along the path, trying to execute a welcoming aura that will beckon one of these cute doggies to you. You don't have to wait very long, though. Oh, oh. oh that is cute. He is cute. You stop as the smallest, cutest, cutest puppy you've ever seen. Skeppers up to you, rocking your path. W wait, what? Hold on. Let me save this. Let me save this because what the... What the heck you mean I have to freaking kick the puppy, eat the... <laughs> what? There's so many options here that I don't understand why. Are you kidding me? Pick up the puppy seems like the... Wait, I think that's the one I did last time. Eat the puppy. Kick the... This seems like the less threatening. What? It's just a puppy. Oh, we're dead. There's no way I would ever do that. Oh, wait. Oh, it's not going to let us do it? So let's just try this one. <laughs> no, that's horrible. There's no way I'd ever do that. Oh, so I could just... Okay. I think I'm going to be sick. There's no way. Okay. So, the only options are leave the park or pick up the puppy. <laughs> Am I going to just leave the park? Yes, leave, leave, leave. I couldn't read that. Now what? Wait, oh no, I've seen this before. But we're just gonna do it for the fun of it. Even if I... I don't like that. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Good. And don't come back. Who's talking? Yo. No, I think I did throw that before. I think I did throw it. And something else happened, like, like, they melted or something. I think it's, so you know what? F that. We're going to the carnival today. You spend the day at the carnival. Ferris wheel, roller coaster, ferro boat. That sounds like Clementon Park. <laughs> Rides you've been on before. Literally, I have. Hoops, coin toss, balloon darts, games you played before. Funnel cake, popcorn, cotton candy. 
food you've eaten before. I got it. All things you've enjoyed. You're surrounded by groups of people. Oh, 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 come on. Laughing, playing, eating, taking pictures, and making memories. And then there's you. <laughs> the lone. Excuse me. The sun hasn't started to set yet. It's still high in the sky. But it will soon. You start to wonder maybe you should just go home for the day. When you stop in your tracks. You see something. New. An attraction you've never seen before. A maze of funhouse mirrors? It sounds... What the... Bruh. Yo, did they do this? Because I did not push that. They wanted me to save it. It sounds... Kind of lame, honestly. There's even a line to get in. But then... What else is there to do? We enter in the maze, man. You enter the maze. A few rooms in, and you notice that the mirrors aren't all weird. I don't like these type of mirrors. Like, I don't like that. Some just show you looking back at yourself. That's what mirrors are supposed to do, right? A little bored, a lot tired, and so very, very... Dot, dot, dot. Very what? Dot, dot, dot. Maybe this was a mistake. Why would you even think of going to a maze of mirrors was a good idea? Even if it was something new to experience. I, I, I can't do this today. You turn around to head the way back you came, went only to bump into a mirror. Well, yeah, you're in a room full of mirrors. Ow, what the? Where's the exit? You try again only to find another mirror blocking your way. By the time you all turn around, you realize that the way you came in is completely gone. Now, how does the cat manifest this? That's my question. Because no matter if we're with him or not, he somehow seems to somehow be everywhere we're at. I can't stand this. Because I know the cat has something to do with this shit. There's no way. Oh, okay, don't panic. I just have to keep keep going forward, right? You step through the only opening you can find and nearly trip over something on the ground. You bend down and pick it up. What do you pick? What's this doing here? In your hand rests a worn-looking flashlight. So we just have flashlights on the floor like that. Curious, you flick it on. I wouldn't be that curious. If, unless it's that dark. Huh? The light doesn't look very... It does now. The lights! Did the power go out or did the attraction op operator forget you were in here? I don't think you. He's thinking that the attraction operator closes you in like this? Yeah, I don't think so. How long have you been in here, actually? You pull out your phone to check the time or maybe call the police when it's it's probably dead. It's probably dead. <laughs> I, I just think of these things because I know how this, how this goes. You grip the flashlight in your hand. The light it emitted earlier was dim enough for you to now to know there's probably not that much juice left. Best to reserve it for worst case scenario and feel your way out. That's the dumbest shit ever. Yeah, you, you, you can do this. You take a calming breath. Well, forward we go. Dot, dot, dot. Hello, darling adventurer. Okay, music turned on and some person's talking to me. Who said, welcome to the mirror maze. Would you like to know how to navigate the maze? I don't know you. I don't even know you. Okay, okay. No need to get snippy. Let's begin. Three, two, one, go. What? What the? Can I figure out where I'm? What I'm supposed to be doing? What the freak? I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, this is some bullshit. Um, I'm pretty sure this room has an exit. Wait, I don't know where to go. Flashlight? Oh, those look, dumb two motherfuckers on the left look like they're... Let's go to the right. Okay, next room. Uh, let's go to the right. Okay, next room. What? The freak? I'm just seeing the left. Next room. All the motherfuckers are. What is these red eyes? I, I low key want to see what happens when you go, sh when you go in there. Go to the set. That's what happens. Ow! Not that way. Oh, lives two, three. Let's see what happens when we die. Cause you know what? I need to figure out the rules of this shit anyway, really. Cause I'm just going it. So we, are we, are we, do we just die? 
do we like restart or something? Suddenly, the lights turn on. Your eyes burn from the sudden brightness. As your vision adjusts, you see that you're completely surrounded by mirrors. The reflections all grotesque in unique ways. What? Look nothing like you. What the? What is that? Who is, like, I gotta stand those, but that just looks weird. But they do look... What? Hungry. And we're dead. You back up. You don't know where to go. Was there even a way out to begin with? You bump back into a mirror. And that takes me to feel a hand griply, firmly grip your shoulder. I said it wrong the first time. We're dead. He chomping on my skin. Ah, there's a sharp pain in your shoulder. You rip away, looking back to see some thing lean out the mirror. His face has no features. So what is he, like a demigorgon, like Stranger Things? Say, say for a large gaping mouth, stained in your blood. Oh, we're looking around in a panic. You think that the mirrors feel closer than before. The path you come in is long gone. You're surrounded. And every time you blink, you can swear the mirrors are getting closer and closer and closer. Your horrifying reflections looking hungrier and hungrier and hung until we're dead. Yeah, that 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 was great. Ending 20. You failed the maze. Wait, so that was an ending? <laughs> that was a freaking ending, bro. Wow, okay. That's fine. Wait, since I'm at the endings, that dog one. Did I actually do that dog one? Because, oh, I did. I did do that dog one. Okay, so I was good to leave out of that. Okay, I got it. All right, now I'm back at the, um, I'm back at the freaking maze thing. You know what? I'm going to have I have some questions, but yes, I need help. Once again, welcome to the mirror maze. You're a bit of a jam, but don't worry. You're in good hands with us. You sound like neutral farms out here. Or rather, good paws. You're not funny. That shit was whack. You see these little cuties here? They'll be doing their best to guide you through the maze. Aren't they generous? When you enter the room, the emergency light will flash, letting you see the past before you for just a second. And also a lie beyond them. Whenever you see these kind kitties, just go where they are and you'll reach the next room. Unfortunately, they're not the only things in here. It is highly suggested that you refrain from following any of our other guests. They can be sneaky or distracting, but they're always hostile. So please take caution when advancing to the next room. Of course, this wouldn't be a, much of a mirror maze without mirrors. Can they hurt you? No, they're just mirrors, silly. They don't do anything at all. And you can't do anything to them either. They're just an obstacle you can't pass through. Go left, center, or go right. The choice is yours. Though, if you find a room with no helpful kitties in sight, and all the paths lead to a mirror, or something else, it's recommended that you stay put. And just maybe it'll work itself out. Maybe, he's not hopeful. Now for your navigation tools. The flashlight you found doesn't have much juice left. We kind of covered that already. It only lets you get a quick extra peek at your surroundings about five times. So try not to use it up at once. I, I, do, you can keep your pro progress to the rooms up to the left and your lives up to the right. You got three lives, so be careful to avoid the less friendly guests lurking around. What? Oh, why only three lives, you ask? Because you're soft and squishy. It wouldn't take much damage to damage you beyond repair. How are we soft and squishy? What are we? And besides, you're human. And humans usually only have one life, yes? And yet here, you get three. So you should be thanking me, is what he's really trying to say. Don't you think you ought to show a little more gratitude? I don't even know who you are talking to me like that. And that's the end of your tutorial. Hopefully it was helpful. Yeah, so I don't have, you know, a freaking funeral later. Ready to play? Can I, you know, not do this? Can you let me go? Your request of forfeit is denied. Let me out of here. Screaming is not allowed in the maze. <laughs> this game is way too easy. You know what? 
Let's see. Is that so? Wait, I, I, they're all done. What, what did you do? Uh-oh, you'll see. What the fuck did I do? What did I do? Oh, shoot. Maybe I might re want to reset that. I'm, I'm going to try it first. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have did this. Yo, I shouldn't have did this. Oh, yo, I, I'm timed. I don't like this. My, what the fuck was that? Oh, uh, I'm like literally. Yo, what? What is that big ass eye? Uh. Center. Next room. What the? Huh? No, we gotta stay. We don't have that much time left. Come on, let's go. I think something just changed. What? No, it doesn't. Wait, hold on. Oh! What the freak is biting on me? Oh, what the? Bitch! Oh my gosh. I think it's because we I yeah, I shouldn't have put the oh, yo I, yo I'm dumb as hell. When I don't even know the freaking rules, why the heck what What? I push center. Oh wait, I'm supposed to stay, my dumb ass. Well, we're dead. We're, we're kinda dead though, so I shouldn't have done that. Go left. Go center. We're dead. We're dead. How the hell am I supposed to do that in freaking... Wait. Oh, I'm just back to this. Well, see, next time, this is why I shouldn't do that dumb shit. Alright, now we're back to, um... Wait, I don't need help. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I'm not doing that shit no more. Talking about this game's way too easy. No, I'm ready to go. Let's go. Um... I didn't get to see shit, though. Okay, uh, we go to right. We don't have a time limit, so I could take as long as I freaking want. Which I was doing pretty good with, you know, that time limit. It's just, you know, that was too fast. And some of those were the big ass eyes. What the fuck was that? This room feels off. I think something just changed. Oh, it still has that. Okay, we're gonna go left. Yo, what is with these eyes? I mean, as long as I don't go in there, it should be great, right? I can't go nowhere, right? I have to stay. I have to stay. Uh, okay. We can go center. Let's go right. I'm, I'm focusing, yo. That's why I'm not talking as much. That scares me with them big-ass eyes. Let's go right again. Uh, we're just gonna keep going right. It's showing me the right way. What are these freaking demon cats for anyway? Left. We won't beat this shit. Left again. We go nowhere. But we can't leave, huh? What? Wait. Oh. Okay. You see it. The exit. You run forward, but as you do, the scenery shifts. What? Just slightly at first. You tell me I did all of that to for to no avail? But you're running too fast to stop yourself from colliding into the glass. Oh, that one probably hurt. Except you don't quite go into the glass. You don't exactly collide with it either. You simply pass through it. And on the other side, you see an endless white void and... What the hell is this? Yourself? Dozens of you. Well, what is this shit? Because that's not me. My fa I have an actual face. Y'all can see this shit, right? Because what so what is this? Hundreds of you wandering around. Aimless. Faceless. So how you know it's you if it's faceless? That shit don't make no sense. 
and empty. So empty and listless, they don't even acknowledge your presence. Um, you try to turn back. Yeah, but the glass doesn't give. Past the glass. It's... Oh, gosh, not you! A familiar black cat walks up and looks at you. What the fuck do you want? You think it meows at you. But you can't make out the sound. I don't give a fuck what it's doing. Stay back there. It tilts his head. And then walks away. That little bitch. The glass goes dark. And then what? He's not even there anymore. Then you watch helplessly as it disappears completely. What the hell? You're trapped. So either way we win or lose, we're... That's why he was, he was poking fun at me. That's why he was looking at my ass like that. With only yourself as company. Ending 19. You beat the maze. Oh my. Oh my god. Do you see this? Now I'm not. I'm not tripping. That's different right? That's different right? Because the cat didn't have the eyes like that. And this wasn't happening. It had the music and. Oh we get into the nitty gritty of this shit. Like, oh my gosh, we might be getting closer to the end because that wasn't like that. Oh my god, oh, that's creepy as hell. All right, I got to, I got to. Woo. Woo. That, that, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna keep going. I don't even think I, this is, we're, we're gonna not take the cat home. We're gonna do the same thing we did up until going to the carnival because we have to go to the um yeah i don't care about you you're gonna follow me anyway uh go to the movies we're going to the movies now it's been a while since a film came out that looked interesting enough for you to drag yourself to a movie theater but there's a showing of one such film at the old theater the movie was a little too niche to be picked up by a new cinema that opened right across the street it's okay though you're not exactly a fan of the crowds because we're a loner and nothing ruins the experience of watching a new movie for you than a noisy audience. I mean, eh, eh. We're probably gonna have to, you know, go back to the other one if we go to the, if whatever one we pick, we're gonna have to do the other one. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I don't care. Let's go to a new one. You don't know why, but you don't really feel great about the idea of being alone right now. Even though I just said we were a loner. Deciding to wait for the movie you've been anticipating to be on, available on DVD or streaming, you join a long line outside the new cinema. By the time you reach the ticket booth, you just want to get inside. So you pick a movie at random and take your ticket to the tired looking teenager manning the booth. I see he, he's grinding out there, making money. The decor is sick and sleek and the inside is bustling with people. Not usually what you're into. But it's kind of nice not being alone. Even if you feel a lonely, little lonely watching families and groups of friends laughing among themselves, you get some popcorn, but the lines of the concession stands are long and the prices are criminal anyway. So I'm not trying to pay all that, I'm cheap. You go through the halls and follow the signs to the theater designated on your ticket before heading inside. Oh boy. <sighs> You sigh at the sight of an absolutely a crowded theater. You head towards the seat only to be told by the person next to it that it's being saved for someone. It's my seat! What are you talking about? I have a ticket! This happens a few more times before you man finally manage to get yourself set up into a seat annoyingly off-center to the screen. But the screen is least visible, if not a little too close, so you grit your teeth and just bury it. Just have to endure it. The lights fade out, but the chatter doesn't. It's a movie, shut your freaking mouths. The rest of your audience seems content to talk through the commercials and even through the trailers. You figure the chatter will stop when the movie actually begins, but it doesn't even get slightly quieter as the opening scene starts to play out. The frick are these people talking for? You sigh out loud, not thinking anyone would hear you anyway. This is why you avoid movie theaters like the plague. What is this? Why? Why are you here? I can't go anywhere without you freaking disturbing the peace. Suddenly, the screen changes, showing the face of 
a black cat. Like we don't know who this is. A familiar black cat. Confused murmurs fill the room. But then, the cat on the screen meows. Oh. Oh. That's disturbing. That's disturbing. The sound is strange and not at all like any cat should sound. Like you haven't figured out that this cat is normal. Like it's been not normal. Haunting. Almost melody. And layered as it's made of multiple voices of different creatures. Creatures that probably would never say this. I, I don't like that. Oh my gosh. You sit in confusion wondering why you haven't already gotten up and left to complain to the cinema staff. But then you hear it. It's scattered and dissonant at first. But among the crowd, people start to chant along with the cat on the screen. Oh no, this is... Oh, this is creepy. Somebody help. Oh no. That's creepy. Why? Why? Oh, this is hypnosis at its finest. Oh. Oh. Oh no. It's, and then they get louder. Soon, the entire room is chanting in perfect unison. Everyone staring intently at the cat on the screen. You're feeling strangely drawn to the screen yourself. I'm not. But the compulsion to stare blankly like the others isn't that strong. For now. Also, you start to notice out of the corner of your eye that some of the people in your immediate vicinity are looking at you. No. That, that's creepy. They're outright staring holes into you. Even if they, as they continue ch chanting. I, I'm getting scared. Why do you think I'm messing up my words? They don't miss a beat as they slowly begin to frown at you in blatant disapproval. Why? Because I'm not chanting like y'all fuckers. Sorry, not sorry. Their scowls deepen as time goes on, as if they're getting impatient. And what? Bitch, I'm not trying to leave the theater. I think that's not an option at this point if they're doing it like this. Let's try to blend in. Let's try to see if they notice that I'm, I'm like them. Thinking fast, you look onto the screen and begin to chant in tandem with the crowd. Oh, they actually want me to... I, I don't know how to do that. Yeah, 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 I don't know how to do that. They stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Why are they not saying nothing? Do they, do they believe it? You feel the harshness of the collective gaze start to ebb away. The air in the theater becoming lighter once again. Oh, they believe it. I think they believe it. Even that still weird fucking sound. You release air shakily, just realizing that you've been holding your breath earlier. For how long? You feel stuck. Surely, you can't just up and leave now. Not after whatever all that was. The people all around you all seem fine now. Not with them chanting like this. But there's no telling if they get aggressive at you for even moving too much. Never mind outright getting up and just leaving. You decide to let it run its course. Hopefully someone will come along, right? Or at least turn the film off? Yeah, that's wishful thinking. You continue to chant along with everyone. I mean, you should kind of see that I'm not doing it the same way. That cat knows. You start to feel lightheaded. You feel as that you could fall asleep, but your eyes don't feel heavy in the slightest. What the? You try to look around and gauge the other's emotional state. Uh oh. Dot, dot, dot. But you can't seem to look away from the screen. Oh, now we're drawn to it. You try again, but you're still locked into eye contact with the cat on screen. It's because we went in to chant along with him, dumbass. Oh, boy. Ew. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. You attempt to physically force your line of vision away. You steal your nerves, 
ready to throw yourself to the crown if you need to. But your body only gets as far as tensing up for a moment before completely loosening itself again, making you lay back limply into your seat. Uh, we can't move. You think you should be panicking right now. But even if your brain feels limp, your thoughts are vaguely muted pastel pink, airy, sickening sweet and loosely spun, like cotton candy. What is this happening here? You, you like cotton candy. You think you shouldn't mind your thoughts and body being like cotton candy either. So, why get up and ruin that? Oh, we're done. It's nice here. We're done. You're more at peace than you ever felt in such a crowded room. Still chanting, you never felt so aligned and in tune with another person. Let alone your entire room full of complete strangers. You're, you're not... Dot, dot, dot. You're not alone. Out of the corner of your eye, the person next to you starts to sink back even farther into the chair. Huh? They sink even more. Then more. Not like they're slouching or reclining, but more like they're... Dot, dot, dot. What? Deflating. Their skin bunches up and wrinkles like fabric, as if their muscles, their bones, have started to disintegrate. Their eyes dim before sinking into their sockets. Oh my god, yeah. Their mouth still attempting to chat. Fall open over a cut off. Gassing as the world ends in an awful hiss. A final re release of air. Dot, dot, dot. You muse thoughtly about whether or not you should be distressed at the sight. I would be? The hell? But even then, the blanket of peace doesn't leave you. Even you're seeing people disintegrate and you're peaceful about that? The fuck? Suddenly, from the pile of skin and clothes next to you, you see a lump moving around. You watch in dazed fascination as the lump makes its way to the part of the skin where the head used to be. And out from the mouth, is this dumb ass black cat. <sighs> now, now we're just... Are we about to fade too? You can hear the familiar hissing sound around you all now as the un unified chants start to fade. Only be the place with the faint meowing of kittens. So, and alone. Again. You don't want that. You can't go back to that. Not again. Not again, but please, just then, you go completely limp. Your body feels light, but it might as well weigh several tons, because you realize suddenly that you can't move. Oh, where next? Not an inch. You can't shift your eyes to look around. You can't even breathe. But somehow, the chant continues to creep weakly from your mouth. Meow. <laughs> oh, so now we're... A few kittens come around and perch themselves on the chairs around you, watching your sinking body. I told you we were next. Meowing as they wait for the youngest sibling to emerge. Alright, well, from you. Dozens of glowing eyes peer down at you. And your eyes start to cave into the sockets of your softening skull. Oh my gosh, this is graphic. The way it just... You manage to make out the silhouette of a familiar cat perching on the seat right in front of you. That bitch. Your vision finally fades, and as that same hiss of air expels itself from your mouth, the last thing you sense is something small and alive shifting eagerly under your skin. Oh, that's the cat. Ending 18. Happy birthday. Uh, that's still, that's, that shit right there still gets me. Happy birthday? That was his birthday? No, it wasn't. I don't get it. Alright, now we're back to this. Try to leave. Let's leave right here. This is too weird. I need to get out of here. I'm not getting turned into a cat. Gathering your courage, or perhaps putting your fear to use, you stand up, fully intending to leave the theater. Oh, and they stopped. When everything comes to an abrupt stop, all of the chanting stops. Even the cat's chanting on the screen. So y'all were waiting for me to get up for me to stop this shit? Dot, dot, dot. You tense and risk a glance around the theater. Uh-oh, it shook, what happened? They're all staring at you. Oh boy, every single one of them. They're not moving. They're not even blinking. You swallow 
throat suddenly dry, even through a nervous sweat completely soaks through your clothes. You highly doubt that sitting back down will fix the situation. Now we just gotta run. Your legs are shaking under the audience's unnaturally tense scrutiny. But you force yourself to step forward and forward and forward until you finally reach the end of the aisle. You can feel the collective gaze even worse. Oh, I didn't even read that whole thing. All of their heads have turned uncomfortably to the left to look directly at you as you keep walking. The screen illuminates their faces, making clear their blank scowls. They seem even more upset than they had been a few minutes ago. Identical frown lines digging between their brows. Uh oh. Uh oh. You keep going. The heavy atmosphere becoming more and more oppressive with every step. You're so tense with anticipation that you fully expect someone to grab you from behind. And do they? But no one does. You don't hear any of them even get up. You exit the theater, holding your breath as the doors close behind you. Well, we're, we're, we're great, right? You briskly walk through the halls, putting as much as possible between you and that theater full of people. Finally reaching the lobby, you just barely manage to catch yourself from falling onto the floor as you gulp in a huge gasp of air. <sighs> you expect to feel relief as your breathing calms, but you feel a lingering sense of dread that only spikes you once you finally notice it, as well as its source. You look up. And your stomach sinks. Wait, what? What? What is what is happening? Oh my gosh. That's no, that's no. All the people in the lobby area of the movie theater, everyone in line at the concession stand, all of them are staring at you. And they dot dot dot. They look even angrier than the people in the theater. You don't hesitate this time. You duck your head, avoiding eye contact, and leave the cinema. Good. You ignore the glares of everyone in the ticket booths and the lines leading to them. Where the... You make your way home. It seems like we're not... Wherever you dare to look up at someone in the way, you flinch at the blister anger, fury, and disgust on their face. What the freak... You think you start to hear the faint sound of a cat meowing behind you. Or maybe a kitten. This is... Oh, doesn't matter. You just want to go home. That ain't going to help. This is not going to help shit. You reach your front door and fumble with the keys. I would, too. I would, I would know what to do. Cowering from the look of pure hatred on your neighbor's face as he stares at you from his door. Nobody can stare at me in my own house. So what you going to do now? Finally... You get inside your apartment, lock all the locks on the door, and slide down with your back against it till you're sitting on the floor. That's some real scary shit right there. Like, I, whew, you gotta be real scared to do that shit. You allow yourself a moment to breathe. Now home, your heartbeat calms, and your fear slowly bleeds from you, leaving you feeling strangely empty. I'd rather feel empty than have all these motherfuckers staring at me. You pass the kitchen. Head to your room and slip under the covers of your bed, trying to fall asleep. Maybe it's all just a bad dream. As you fall into a fitful sleep, sure to be full of nightmares of glaring eyes, you try to ignore the ever-increasing sounds of cats meowing and yowling in a distance outside your apartment. How do you ignore that? Ending 17, Black Sheep. So you just... This month. So you just somehow just... I can't even. All right, we're going to go to the old theater this time. Maybe it'll be a little bit better than that. You eagerly buy your ticket from the kind old man in the booth and head inside. It's barren of any trace of other people, and the decor looks like it hasn't changed since the 80s. Maybe even the 70s. But it's what you were counting on. You consider buying some popcorn. Why does it keep doing that? Maybe I'm doing it by accident. But can't help to be concerned that everything in the session might be expired. Wow. You move on and walk through the halls, finally locating the theater designated on your ticket stub. <sighs> oh, sorry. Ooh, had to get that out. I expected the theater of your movie would be playing and it's, it's completely empty. Perfect. Just what I need after all that shit. You pick a spot right in the middle, even counting the seats and taking into consideration the gap of the staircase. As you settle in, 
The dim lights fade away, leaving the room pitch black for a few seconds. Dot, dot, dot. Before the screen, screen flickers on. No commercials or trailers pop up. The movie just begins. That's weird, but you know what? Fuck it. Please, you shrug and let yourself get immersed in the opening scene. But just as you're getting into the premise, the doors open behind you, momentarily casting light into the room and ruining the atmosphere. You hold in a frustrated sigh. Frustrated sigh. It is a public establishment after all, so you can't get mad. The place can't exactly afford to stay open if you're the only customer. You try to refocus on the movie, but you sense the new presence slowly shifting around the theater before heading in your general direction. Like, you gotta just pick where I'm sitting at to be where you want to be at. Wh what? And you gotta sit right the fuck it. You gave to under disbelief as a stranger shuffles down to the aisle only to sit right in front of you. You have all these fucking seats and you choose to sit right in front of me. Talk about fucking disrespectful. Dot, dot, dot. There's no one else in here and there's plenty of places to sit. The stranger is also unusually tall. Oh, heck nah. Even with the stadium-like arrangement of the seats being on a somewhat steep incline, they're completely blocking your view. Uh, would you mind moving the fuck away? I'm trying to watch a movie. Move to another spot. Confront the stranger. Man, we got all these seats. I'm just gonna move. You don't want to risk escalating the situation further. This whole thing is already making you uneasy. Would they? Ch why would they choose to sit right in front of you? Surely they wouldn't know you wouldn't be able to see past them or don't care. So guess what? Shaking your head with a passive aggressive scoff in the stranger's direction. <laughs> you reluctantly pick another, less perfect seat in the theater. But as you settle down, you see the strange person get up. <laughs> only to once again sit down directly in front of you. Is this bitch serious? You look around somewhat helplessly as if waiting for someone to sli silently agree with you about how odd all this is. Or at least to inform you that it's all an elaborate prank. prank. But there's no one else here with you. That's how you always liked it, but now it's just me and him. You can't help but think that maybe it would be nice to have someone else here if it meant not being alone with this weird fucking jerk. Move to another spot. I'm just going to keep thinking he's just going to keep moving but we're gonna try again you move again and he's gonna do the same thing sit right in front of you you bristle annoyed and a little humiliated are they just getting a kick out of this or something you wasted enough time on this jerk and you don't even know what's going on in the movie anymore dot 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 now we now we confront him because now this shit is getting sad you hate confrontation you can already feel your palms starting to sweat at the idea of it your throat's closing up and your body's starting to shake You've always been more of a flighter than a fighter, but today is different. You paid for this ticket. You wanted to watch this movie for ages, and now this total stranger has ruined the entire experience for you. So, I got something to say. You're all alone in this theater. There's no one to help you if something goes wrong. That's why we make sure we come out on top. But you're angry enough that you ignore the signs of your body, begging you to put much distance as you can between yourself and the stranger. You stand up. Even standing and higher up an incline, the stranger is still at least a head taller than you. Okay, that's crazy. Why is it going dark? The movie continues to play in the background, but you feel as a hush immediately falls heavily over the theater at your movement. As you can sense the stranger anticipating what you plan to do next. You square your shoulders and force a little bass into your voice. Hey! The effort makes your words come out more harshly than you intended. Like a sudden and vicious bark. Bark. I don't care. You talking about some? It came out hard, more harsher than you thought. This bitch sat here and moved three times to sit in front of me. You need to get. You need to get this work. But you figure they deserve it anyway. Exactly. You're being a real jerk. You know that. What are you just playing at, huh? Are you trying to piss me off? Cause we can throw these hands. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Dot, dot, dot. The silence that follows your words is deafening. So much that you glance at the screen, only find out the movie has paused. Oh, this. Oh, no, 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 no. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, no. Your attention is ripped back to the stranger in front of you as they shift slightly, like a small anim animal trying desperately to anticipate the moves of a predator. You don't move an inch. 
You don't look away. You don't dare to blink. Oh. Inside, in, inside, oh my, I think I am getting scared. Instead, your eyes widen as a person's head turns, then turns some more. Go ahead, turn. Then turns more behind what should would be possible. Neck bones, oh, he, he, he doing the, the bitch from the exorcist. Oh, no, no, that's what we, that's what we talk about here. To face you directly. And then smile. Bitch, you, you think that? Okay, you're going to have to do a little bit better than that. If you think that's going to creep me out. You can't move. But the, the narrator can't move. Narrator. Wide glowing eyes resting above a wider grinning mouth. Gaze down at you. What the fuck you want? The stranger opens their mouth. And what comes out is something impossible to comprehend. What the f... Oh, this is... This is what happened in the other thing. Oh, you think you're funny, huh, bitch? I had this happen already. The voice is endlessly deep and creaks like a weighty door, foreboding an oddly melody. Alright, so if it creaks like a weighty door, put some WD-40 in that bitch mouth. Maybe he'll shut up then. Alluring. But it also snaps you out from your terrified trance. Before you know it, you're already out the door. Bye, bitch. I'm not gonna stand there and let you keep doing that. You run through the halls of the empty theater, heading for the exit. You feel something watching you from behind, but you're too afraid to look. Ain't no time to be looking back at me. I mean, I need to go. The exit now in sight. You sprint forward and bust through the doors. You look around frankly and spot the crowded cinema across the street. People, that's what you need. Safety and numbers and all that shit. Without thinking, you rush into the street when a sinking sensation crawls down your spine, compelling you to look behind you. Do not look behind you. Do not look behind you. Do not look behind you. As much as it says don't, I think if I go to a new cinema, we're gonna look behind us. What you got, punk? What you got? Despite your resistance, you feel your head turning to look back of its own accord, while in the middle of the street, you catch a glimpse of the grotesque looking person standing beyond the glass doors of the old theater, watching you intensely with that fucking cat, cradling something in their arms, something familiar. Yeah, but what the freak? You were in the middle of the street? Now see, here's the thing. Before I picked that option, I did not know that we were in the middle of the fucking street. I thought he was on the other side where the old, the new cinema was at. I didn't know he was in the middle of the fucking street. A glimpse is all that you get as a truck speeds forward and crashes into your body. That thing split me <laughs> more than just crashed. Wow. You're killed on impact. Your body splatter all across the road and crush further under the heavy tires. Wow. Ending 16, poor screening arrangements. Nah, I got, oh, you think you're, okay, you think you're funny, huh? All right, wait till I get to finally whoop your ass. All right, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens when I, you just go to a new cinema. Refusing to even risk a peek over your shoulder, you rush across the street to the new cinema theater. You didn't realize that it felt like you'd been surrounded by some kind of dreadful pressure. Whew. Until it suddenly vanishes, leaving you feeling more than a little shaken. But at least breathing becomes easier, which I need. You think it's within your best interest to repress everything that just happened. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Deciding to wait for the movie you've been anticipating be available, available on DVD or streaming. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Is this the same shit? Wait, this is the same stuff. Okay, so we did all that already. What's one we haven't done? Because we have at least 19 more endings to do. How the fuck are we going to get these shits? Let's see. Maybe if we take the cat home, maybe this is what we need to do. Because now I need to... Well, why not? Right? Right? 
I probably read this already, so I, I don't think I really want to read it. I want to see what happens when we get back to the house. Yeah, I need to get back to the house. Yeah, I remember all this. There's something we're missing. Do something with the cat. Like what? Hmm. Clean the cat? No, we tried that one already. Hey, hey, sing it. Bruh. Let's pet the cat. It's not every day you get the access to a cute, fluffy animal. What else is there to do but pet it to your heart's content? You sit on the floor in your living room and click your tongue to call the cat over. Alright. Hey, the cat dashes over to you, immediately climbing into your lap. Poor thing. You just want some attention, don't you? Yeah, it does. Alright, alright. Heh <laughs> heh. You carefully pet the cat. A rub behind an ear. A scratch under the chin. A smooth sweep along the back. Hey. Hey. You good? Hey. You keep the pet and the cat in your lap, enjoying this bonding time together. But then the cat starts to get restless after a while. What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, you want me to keep petting you? That's what he wants. You're not quite ready to stop. You feel so calm. I just noticed this music. The repetitive action is soothing your unusually overworking mind. You keep petting. Oh, that's what they want. The cat leads away from your next head pat. No, they don't want it. It's trying to get out of your lap. That's enough. Do something else. No, we're going to try to keep petting. When you scratch under the cat's chin, it bites at your fingers. You might be bleeding. But really, it barely hurts. More of a warning than anything. Oh boy. The cat struggles in your hole. It's watching you closely. Oh, you annoyed, huh? You annoyed, little bitch? Well, guess what? I'm gonna annoy the fuck out of you now. Keep petting. You keep petting at the cat. Yeah. You getting annoyed, huh? That's how I feel from you tormenting me all these times. Of killing me and all this shit. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have done. He said, I thought he was going to bite me. No, he, he took a pound of flesh with that. The cat bites off your finger. Dot, dot, dot. It hurts. You're definitely bleeding now. But for some reason, you just can't stop. Are you serious? Did you not get the message? You don't know what it is. It's fur is so much softer than you realize. You think that it'll be shining in a faint light of your living room, but as if the darkness of the cat's black coat is sucking in all the illumination around it, rendering it completely null. You're drawn to it, like you're somehow holding a deep, dark abyss right in your lap. But it's purring again. It seems calmer now, munching on your severed finger, that's why. The stump between your thumb and middle finger is leaking. But, but you keep petting. You fret that your blood will ruin its fur, but the cat no longer seems to mind. What? Time passes. It's dark out now. You've been doing this all fucking day? Soft as the fur is, your palm has started to feel raw and damp under constant friction from your petting. Yeah, I would think so. You think faintly that you, maybe you've had enough. But he doesn't. You start to lift your hand from the cat. When the flat. And then I get scratched why why I've been petting all you all day you didn't like it at first now he takes off my whole hand why your entire hand is separated from your wrist it flops onto your lap beside the cat the cat's claws on its bright front right paw glisten with crimson liquid crimson liquid you don't feel it for a moment but your body tenses Anticipating the pain as you blankly watch the cat look at the bloody palm of your severed hand. Why are you... Ugh, it hurts. It really, really hurts. Then, the cat looks up at you and you feel compelled. What? To keep petting. <laughs> you're reluctant, but you're also afraid of what will happen if you don't need the call. Oh, don't heed the call. What will you lose next if you try to resist again? This is weird. You were hurt from your inst instant petting earlier. 
yet now you've been hurt for trying to stop, which doesn't make sense at all. It defies all logic, but that's what scares you. This cat defied all logic when, we, when he first killed us. There's no reasoning with such fickle whims. You feebly try to raise your uninjured hand to pet the cat, but it stiffens. Golden eyes glint dangerously. Oh, I don't think this is a good idea. Well, all right then. You raise your bleeding stump and resume your petting to the best of your ability. But it likes that. It wants me to pet him with my stump. The fuck? You pet. And you bleed. You pet. And you bleed. <laughs> and then we're just bleeding. You pet and you... Dot, dot, dot. Ending seven. Personal boundaries. Does that make any sense at all to y'all? Of why that is? What was that? Why did we have to go through that? Let's try to... I'm pretty sure we fed it and we... we. Let's try to play with it. Poor thing was probably bored stiffing, sitting in that old box all day. Just watching crowds of people. Ignoring them. You just can't leave them alone as soon as you're home. A little interspecies socializing won't kill you, right? No. It. Wouldn't. Aw. Uh, you just... Want some attention, don't you? You wanna play, huh? Okay, then. W what to play, though? A hide and seek, a classic. Hell no. A, um, a hide and seek, a classic. I will get my ass kicked. <laughs> no, but seriously, playing hide and seek is a bad idea with this thing. Let's do it though. Just get that out of the way real quick. What about hide and seek? That don't the cat don't know what you're talking about. You're not quite sure how this is going to work. Can a cat even understand the concept of a game? Let alone one rules like hide and seek? Here, just you pick up the cat and turn him away from you before hiding behind the armchair. You're almost certain that the cat would have turned and looked while you were hiding. Out of confusion at least, if nothing else. <laughs> it's like, I found you! <laughs> Regardless, a few moments later, the cat cautiously peeks around the armchair at you, eyes curious. You found me! You win! I think they like it. The cat looks confused, but pleased at your praise. This time, you put it in the armchair so it can't see your hiding spot as easily. You dash over to the kitchen, hiding behind the counter. It takes a little longer this time for the cat to find you. This time, when it does, it startles you by hopping down into your lap from the countertop above. Whoa! <laughs> you found me again! Okay, you win again. You reward it with little scratches behind the ear and under the chin when it leans into your touch. Yeah, purr on the way, because this is about to get real bloody, ain't it? Heh, <laughs> okay. Why don't you give it a try? He's like, what are you talking about? You go and stay in the middle of the living room. The cat following you. You make a show of covering your eyes and turning around. Yeah, that's what you don't do. I don't care if this cat was friendly or not. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, go! You turn around and see the cat is gone. So this cat understands English a little bit because there's no way he would be gone like that. And what other stuff he's done. Hmm. You sure catch on quick? Are you sure that's a cat? <laughs> there aren't many places available in your apartment for someone your size to hide. But without the opposable thumbs needed to open the closed doors in the hall, the cat will have its limits too. Fair game. Okay. Now where to look? Now we gotta look. Oh, shit. <gasps> Living room, I mean, I'm pretty sure he's not in there. Look behind a couch in the armchair, then under the coffee table. Hmm, nothing. The living room was pretty sparse when it comes to furniture, after all. Kitchen, we're just gonna go down the line. You peek around the counter, grab a chair, and check on top of the fridge. You even open the cupboards along the floor, just in case the cat managed to squeeze inside. But nothing. You decide that's for the best. 
The kitchen is for making food, not playing games. Like the cat knows that. Actually, when you hid, the cat found you in the kitchen, so you can't say that. Hallway. You peek around a quarter into the hall. And what? Dot, dot, dot. Nothing. You're not sure what you were expecting. With all the doors closed, there's nowhere in the hall for this cat to hide. You couldn't find the cat anywhere. You start to get a little worried when you hear a soft sound coming from the hall that you just came from. You head to the hall and listen again. Dot, dot. What? Where is he scratching from? That sounded like it was coming from your bedroom, but... You walk down the hall to your room and gingerly open the door. How the freak did you get in there? <sighs> the cat trots out and runs around your legs and meowing instantly. How did you get in the room? It was closed, wasn't it? It looks disappointed somehow that we couldn't find it. Perhaps in your apparently subpar seeking skills. But you lift the cat into your arms and look at your bedroom door. How did, did you get in my room? Yeah, answer that. Oh, that's something else. Dot, dot, dot. You, you know the door was closed. Right? You start to question because like now how did the hell did you get in? The cat wiggles out of your hole and runs out of the hall. Where the hell are you going? You follow to see it sitting in the middle of the living room. What are you meowing for like that? Upon seeing you, the cat promptly turns around. Oh, he really caught on. I think it's my turn to hide. Guess it wants to take its turn seeking? You're about to indulge it by hiding behind around the counter again when... I should have known that was going to happen. The lights. D did the power go out? Darn it. As you wait for your eyes to adjust to the darkness, you notice the cat hasn't even moved an inch. Was it scared? Hey, are you... Heartbeat. Uh-oh. What? For some reason, your heart starts beating faster. You... You consider going over to the cat, but when you do, what? Oh, them eyes. The thought makes you feel. No, I can see that. You feel like your life is in danger. So, let's see. You need to hide. Now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why do we have... Get out of the apartment. That will probably be the smarter choice. Uh, let's see. Get out. You're halfway to hall. You look at the door and see several more locks over it than you know you have. You peek over at the cat. It's not looking at you, but you feel a wave of disappointment. I'm, I'm, I'm talking fast because I'm trying to see why that's still on. Like a warning. Uh, you back away from the door, feeling slowly subside. Letting you breathe again. There's no getting out then. You need to hide. What the hell? Why is it, uh, hiding in the hallway closet? I don't know, I'm picking one. You quickly sip in the highway cl hallway closet. Uh-oh. The door won't close because the heavy box is now blocking it from when you squeeze inside. If you try to move further, the cat might hear it. That is, if it hasn't heard you already. This won't work. You need to hide somewhere else. Hurry! I'm trying to hurry. Hide behind... Hide in your bedroom. Um, question, question, room. Carry close the door behind you. The only place to hide your bedroom is the closet. Uh... Hide in the closet. I'm, I'm trying to fix. You lock the door as quietly as you can before lunging into the closet and sliding the door shut. As soon as you secure yourself inside the closet, wait, the, the thing went away so I can calm down my reading. There's a sudden shift throughout the entire apartment. As if something can sense that you're as ready as you'll ever be. As if it can sense that you're ready to be hunted. A horrible chill runs down your spine as you realize what this game has become. This is a simple game of hide and seek anymore. This is being hunted by a predator as prey. It it never really mattered where you chose to hide, did it? Really? Oh, shoot. As if in answer to your question, you hear a loud slam on the bedroom door. You just managed to hold back from making a startled noise at the sound. Oh, oh my gosh, that, your heart rate kicks up again. My heart rate's going up. Making it feel hard to breathe quietly. Hard to breathe in general. Oh my, yo, okay. You're not getting in. I'm not opening the door for you. 
Tears fill your eyes as you cover your panting mouth and your shaking hands. It knows. It knows. Crying with your hands over your mouth, trying to smother the choked sounds of leaking out of you. You slide down the wall, your back to the closet, into a heap on the floor. Uh, I hate that! Oh, this is getting, this is getting bad. You flinch harshly at the sound of the door being ripped off its hinges. You flinch harshly at the sound of the door being ripped off its hinges, followed by a loud crash against the wall on the other side of the room, like the door had been blown away. Oh shoot, he's gonna find me. The silence that follows is almost too much to, to bear. You, you can't. A single sob skates through your mouth. I think it said mouth. You squeeze your eyes shut in defeat at how loud it sounds in the quiet of the room. No, not much point in hiding anymore, is there? You instinctively put whatever energy you have left into listening for footsteps, even if you emotionally shut down. But you hear nothing. Nothing. Oh my gosh, this is so intense. Then... Is that opening the... Oh no. Something. Slides open the closet door. We're dead. Oh, we're dead. You curled in on yourself. Knees up. Back curved forward. Head down. Mouth covered. Eyes shut tight. So tight that it hurts. You don't want to look. You don't want to look. But that's what it's waiting for. It won't end you on this final act of cruelty. Of making you look at it before it takes your life. So, so freaking cruel. You just want this to be over. So... You open your eyes. And we're dead. Wait. Are we? Are we? Oh, you see something glaring at you from the darkness behind the closet door. It looks disappointed. Again? Because it found me? In the moment before you draw your last breath, you almost consider apologizing for being such an unworthy prey. Guess your hiding skills were just as subpar as your seeking skills. Oh boy. Oh wait, he didn't even kill me. Disappointing prey. I thought he would have killed me. We gotta go back to see if them hiding spaces would have made any difference. Alright, now... Where... <sighs> Sit on the couch! Why would I do that? Are you joking? You get the feeling Cat won't appreciate your lack of effort in any way. Like hell, you're getting any closer to it. Stop messing around and find a place to hide. I'm just gonna go in all these. No, it's too close. It would find you immediately. Kitchen counter. You've hidden there before and almost found you instantly. That won't work. Are these gonna... I think this is just in the hall. There's nowhere to hide in the hall. I think this is what it's gonna do anyway. Quick sip of hallway closet. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. Hide in the bathroom. Quickly rush to the bathroom and... Wh why is the door locked? What? Are you kidding me? So, either way, I guess we had to... I forgot that that happened, yo. Let's see. Looking for some yarn? Yeah. If every movie and cartoon involving cats that you've watched since childhood is to be believed, then you can deduce with almost absolute certainty that cats freaking love that yarn. Probably. We're gonna find out. He has some yarn. I knew he did. You unearthed some for some old box in a hallway closet that's filled with some knickknacks from various abandoned hobbies. You consider just handling ball of red white yarn over to the cat and supervisors from the side. But that would defeat the idea of playing together, wouldn't it? You cut off a decent length of string from the barbed yarn and go back to the living room. Look at the cat resting on the floor. It's not sleep, but when it looks up as you enter the room, you can feel it. You, you feel like it could doze off right then and there. You'll fix that. You smirk a little, confident with your surprise. And let the piece of yarn dangle above the floor, just above the floor, pinch between your thumb and index finger. Ooh, look at him. He perked up real quick, didn't he? Yeah, the sudden shift in the cat's demeanor makes your heart start to beat a little faster. Its posture has barely changed at all. Just a subtle shift of the head and ears. 
a slight tension in his shoulders, a sharpness in his gaze as it locks into the yarn, dangling an itch above the floor. The cat could still pass as being almost relaxed, calm, too calm, and yet the air is thick with the eagerness to jump forward, waiting for the right moment to strike. Is it going to strike the yarn or us? You feel like it's just witnessed the awakening of the perfect predator. You're almost afraid what will happen once you make the first move. That's what it's waiting for you to do. Uh-oh. But it would be you who makes the first move. Oh, shoot. You take a deep breath. Relax your shoulders. It's still waiting. And... Oh. Yoink. <laughs> the cat had lunged the instant you wiggled the yarn. But you're faster. It completely misses as you flick your wrist, making the yarn recoil out of its reach like a terrified snake. Having overshot the landing in its eagerness, the cat stumbles and looks around as if shocked at his failed attack. You dangerously click your tongue to help reorient it. The cat twists his head around at the sound. You're slightly taken back at the intensity of his stare on the yarn. But you persist. You wiggle the yarn again, encouragingly. And yes, maybe even a little tauntingly, like you can't get it. What you gonna do now? This time, the cat anticipates the yarn's upward dodge and leaps up to swipe at it. But you're already one step ahead, puffing the yarn to dance gracefully out of reach once more. <laughs> oh, he's getting pissed. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. It's a little condescending, but you can't seem to help it. For some reason, it feels like a good knocking the feline down a bag or two. <laughs> feels a little good, doesn't it? At least it seems to be enjoying itself? You hope anyway. You keep going. <laughs> it's trying so <laughs> How many times? The cat's movements have gotten more aggressive. It must be getting frustrated. You could swear it nearly took a shot at your eye that last time. It jumped so high and erratically. You've been keeping the yarn in constant motion, afraid to slow down. Your wrist is starting to get tired. That cat doesn't seem to be losing any energy though. It's like it's getting faster and faster. Uh oh. We, we keep trying though. We can't get it. Oh. Ugh. Your wrist finally cramps sharply, making you lose control of the yarn's motion as the tip of it brightly brushes lightly against your stomach, and that's where you get hit. Oh my gosh. I figured that was going to happen too. Oh my gosh. Ah. Pain rips low across your torso. Into your torso. How far did this bitch. D cut deep in. Oh my gosh. Blood pours out of your mouth. In a daze, you look down and see red blooming slowly along the bottom of your shirt. Around the tears in the fabric. <laughs> plot. What, what, which is plot? You watch as, as long, thick ropes of something pour out from under your shirt into a... He cut you that deep? Oh, for a yarn? A single red streak rope still ha Oh, I can't even read this. Oh, are, are those your... You crumble to the ground. Your vision has gone blurry. But, where that cat at? He's right there. Did he get his yarn like he really wanted? You can just make out the shape of something small and a deep inky black as it walks over and inspects your... through your intestines before it starts to giddily roll around in a mass of your insides next to you. Your bloody insides, really? And you're gonna meow at that? That's all it wanted. It never wanted the yarn. Darkness falls over you. I can't with this dude. This cat sounds happy. Nonsensically, you wonder where the yarn is going, but there's really no need to worry about it. The cat seems to be content with the next best thing. Ending 11 at the end of your rope. Are you freaking kidding me? Let me see how many endings we got. 24. We're still not even close to. <gasps> oh my gosh. We're not even close to freaking. I mean, we got a, we got a few. We got a few. Oh shoot. We can't skip this. Oh, this must be good. <gasps> oh, this is something. Well, in the days leading up to my meeting with it. Who is it? it? I saw that a few times where it said it. I've been obsessed with a memory. Someone precious to me had found someone precious to them. My best friend. My 
only friend. I was happy for him, truly. But then I've been happy for the others too. They promised it wouldn't happen to me again. That they knew how it felt to be told someone you cared for. That they outgrown you and your friendship. That they never, ever do such a thing to me. Dot, dot, dot. There's not a moment that passes now that I wish I'd risked the pain of their rejection. And just believe them. But I didn't. I pulled away before they could, trying to protect my fragile heart. But it only hurt all the more. Selfish as it was, I wanted them to fight harder to keep me around. When it appeared before me, it promised to be just that. I, who was it? A friend that would never, ever let me go. A friend that would never, ever leave me. This is actually getting very suspicious. More suspicious than I ever thought. All that and all I had to do was promise the same thing in return. Oh boy. Um. Uh. Oh, we back to. Oh. We can't skip this. The weather good today. That good thing. Maybe good luck too. Yes, lucky. What lucky, lucky? Why? We didn't start shit yet. We didn't start a path. Or maybe it was. It was what? Fate. Oh. Hmm? You tend to allow yourself to... Wait. Is this back to where it's supposed to be? Because it just did that again. I'm so confused. Okay, so now we're back to... Yo. That just unlocks something that we didn't even have before. Yeah, we did... We did that. Okay, the laser point. I think we need to do that. Cats are curious creatures by nature. They're also natural hunters. S sort of. Why not pass the time by letting the cat hunt after something it will never quite understand? That sounds a little mean when you think of it like that. But it's not like the cat will know anyway. <laughs> yeah, that you think. Ignorance is bliss. Or so they say. So you dig out your old laser pointer from your long gone dreaded days of group pre presentations in school. You flip it on and see that even after all this time, the batteries still work. You get a little kick out of aiming it at a mirror hanging in the living room so it reflects off the gl uh, glass, making a little red dot appear on your knee. Uh oh. The cat cautiously walks over, stopping every few steps to cast a look of suspicion on you. When it finally reaches you, it lightly presses a paw to your knee, like it's trying to catch the dot of red light as casually as possible. Hmm, you managed to hold back a chuckle. Not that it really matters, so you gonna pay for that, saying that. The cat isn't paying attention to you at all, entirely focused on the light now, resting on top of its paw. <laughs> you move the light a little higher above your knee. Why would you put it on you at all? The cat reacts immediately, trying to pin the light down. But in the next second, you've already moved it to the floor. There we go, move it away from you. The cat jerkily follows, attempting a more energetic pounce when you shift the red dot. Over here, over there, and over there, by the couch. <laughs> Yo, look at his face, he's getting angrier. <laughs> he's getting pissed. <laughs> but I like it though. The cat might be ignoring you, but you're certainly enjoying yourself. It's been a while since you laughed this much. Dot, dot, dot. You're laughing so much, in fact, that you accidentally shift the red dot onto a lamp beside the couch. Welp, your lamp is done. In the haste to get the light, the cat leaps onto the lamp, sending them both to the ground. Oh well. I didn't expect it to sound that loud. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh, look at that cat. The cat is sitting in the middle of the former lamp's broken shards. That's where you fucked up. Back hunch, its head whipping back and forth as in a panic. 
you quickly turn off the laser pointer and rush over. I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Are you hurt? You reach down to pick up the cat to check for injuries when... Oh, oh, yeah, you get hurt for that. Ow, hey! The cat swipes at you, claws extended. It backs up and twitches away, making frantic half-turns in various directions as if looking for something. Or waiting for something to appear. Maybe it's time to pull out that laser pointer. Oh, jeez. That, that really hurt, you know? You hold the hand with, with the scratch close to your chest. It's bleeding, but it's not too big. You're more annoyed than anything, but... Oh, okay. Immediately, your noise starts to bleed into concern. Okay, shut up! You watch in shock as the cat starts to run around tearing at the carpet, the sofa, your armchair. You want to stop it, but you're afraid of getting in the middle of his rampage. You consider calling a vet for advice on how to calm it down, but for some reason, dot dot dot, you feel like that wouldn't be a good idea. We're gonna figure out who that freak that is. What happened to you? Is it? Uh oh. An idea comes to you, or rather a realization. You grasp the laser pointer, aiming it safely away towards the floor in the middle of the living room, thinking, hoping, that the cat will calm down if it found what it was looking for. You turn on the laser pointer. Yeah, that's what it wanted. Dot, dot, dot. The cat's uh, reaction is immediate. Uh-oh. I thought I could bump to this, but I don't even know. Oh! This bitch just turned into a lion or something? It roared. You screwed up. How? In a span of mere seconds, you watch as the cat spies the red dot from its perch to the shredded on a shredded armchair. It leaps high into the air, changes in the air. Oh, it, everything's done now. And slams down upon the dot on the floor with a weight and force that shakes the whole apartment, maybe even the whole building. You wonder daisily how none of this other tenants have rushed over to complain about that noise. Yeah, as you stare at the site right in front of you. Oh my gosh. The cat has somehow grown in size. Eyes bulging and glowing. Bale trashing, thrashing. Teeth enlarged. Barred and covered alarmingly in bubbling froth. Ew. I don't want to hear that much detail. Its giant claws rip and shred through the carpet, through the floor, tiles, and even below them. Ravis are trying to get at the red dot. Your hands are shaking. You don't know what else to do. You feel trapped. You have to get away. Get it away from you. You slowly back up towards the door. The light moves with you. Uh oh, you fucked up. You can't do nothing. Instantly, you flick the light away, this way and that. The cat stampeding after it. It's breaking everything. So fast. Smashing through the TV, breaking the couch in half. Damn! Too fast. Bulldozing through the wall to get to the hallway. Oh yeah. A chance. You turn, intending to bolt out the door and never come back. But in your haste, you forget something. You forget several somethings. You forgot the laser pointer, gripped like a lifeline in your hand. Uh oh. You forget the mirror, so miraculously hanging on the wall next to the hallway. The laser reflecting off of it. Oh boy. Pointing a small glowing red dot. Where? On the back of your head. We're done. We're done. And as you reach for the door, yeah, um, I think it's safe to say goodbye world to that. He's growling at me. You forget that it's locked. <laughs> that it's locked. Yeah, uh, we're dead. Yep. I wasn't even scared of that one. You didn't get me with that one, but we're dead. You don't even have the chance to turn around before the cat lunges all the way across the room at you. It's tearing me the freak up. Look at that shit. Alright, I think we died after like the first three times. Dot, dot, dot. You're torn to shreds before you can even blink. Dot, dot, dot. Oh. Ending 12. Targeted. Oh, boy. My question is... 25 of these things. How the freak are we going to get any more of these endings? It seems like I didn't got... Not mostly all of them, but like... I forgot how to get any of these other ones. 
Hold on. What if I do something alone with the cat not there? Because, let's see. Feed the cat. I think we did all that. So, let's try to do something alone. Like what? Alright, I think these are, like, the some of them. Let's see. Take a nap. <laughs> let's just try to get that out of the way, because I know that's a bad idea. You're a little tired from the events of the day. Making life-changing choices, like committing to the responsibility of caring for another living creature, really wears you out. You could definitely use a nap. You head to your room and get dressed in your pajamas before you decide to grab a glass of water from the kitchen. You head back to your bedroom, ready for a much-needed nap. And the cat is just on the bed, ain't he? Whoa! Only for the cat to race past you through your open door and jump on the middle of the bed. It takes its time kneeling at the sheets before settling down and closing its eyes. Okay, so it had the same idea as me. Well, that was fast. You frown thoughtfully. thoughtfully. Now that your mind's on it, you find yourself really craving a nap in your own bed. There's no way you can settle sleeping on a couch. Certainly not the armchair. Which means you should... Move the cat. Move that bitch. You tentatively move, nudge the cat and attempt to make it move on its own. But it's not moving, ain't it? It doesn't bulge in the slightest. Move the cat. This is your bed, man. Stop being a bitch. Push a little more firmly this time. Oh, you can perch up all you want. This is my bed. The cat sounds annoyed with you. Move the cat. I don't know, that sounds mad, but I don't care. Go ahead. Opens one other eye, slides up to look at me. Go, what you gonna do? Scratch me up like you always do? Was it a little deeper than before? Move with the cat. Yeah, you really wanna do this? Yeah. Come on. Shove your cat with all your might, and then it kills me. Oh, shit. Gah! You're thrown back to by some invisible force and crash into the dresser before falling to the ground. Invisible force. So now this cat has powers like that? Wind knocked out of you. You look up in the daze. You you don't quite quite comprehend what it is you're seeing. A strong swirling wind has picked up, throwing items all over the place. Now we're dealing with, you know, the freaking supernatural. As if a miniature hurricane just taking form in your room. And right there in the center of it all is the damn cat. Hovering in the air but above the bed. Its eyes open, glowing like molten lava. Damn. That's not even a meow. What the hell? You watch the vortex open in the center of your own bed. And panic as the swirling wind turns into a vacuum. Dragging you towards the bed. Gah! Your nails catch and tear as you desperately try to cling to the carpet. The floorboards. Any and every piece of furniture within your reach. Bloody fingers slippery come clumsy on every surface. Uh oh. But there's nothing you can do. As you touch the vortex, your body starts to disintegrate. Tiny particles of your body separating and floating into nothing. The last thing you see is the cat landing nimbly on the bed and needling at, at your sheets before it curls up and falls back asleep. Bitch! Do, do not disturb. Bitch, disturb my ass. Okay, let's try sleeping next to the cat and not moving that bitch. You shrug. What's the harm in sharing the bed, right? We both have had a long day, after all. You try to carefully avoid jousting cat as you lay down, but he immediately swoops over and curls up against you anyway. Okay, so that's all we had to do. You smile. Sweet dreams. Uh oh. Hmm? You feel like you slept for a long time. You feel a warm weight on your back. But you don't see the mystery solved then. That cat is on your back. You feel comfortable? You consider getting up. But as soon as the thought enters your head, your mind fills with static and a deep sense of disapproval. From who? Not yet then? Okay. The cat, jostled by your attempts at movement, needs painfully at your, painfully at your back before settling down again. Notice he said painfully. You fall back into slumber too. Okay, how long has it been now? It's night. You want to get up. Ugh! Calls dig into your back like a warning. 
Okay, so I just can't get up. Tomorrow then, right? <laughs> I guess the purr means yeah. So we don't get to eat nothing all day, I guess. It's morning. You'll be late for work. But the cat doesn't even bulge. You don't even try to get up this time. You just close your eyes and drift off again. So we're just going to... It's not going to allow us to get up. It's... Uh-oh. It's the next day. Since the last several days. What the f... Or has it been weeks? I don't think you even know. Or longer. You're not even quite sure. Yeah. You're hungry. You don't know how long you've been lying down. You feel sore on your back, but also on your stomach, your arms, and your face. Pretty much everywhere. You can't remember your last meal. The last time you drank anything. You've been sleeping all this time. But you feel exhausted. More tired than you think you've ever felt in your life. It feels like uh, excuse me, a giant hand is pressing you into the bed. You can't remember the last time you even considered moving. This is oh that cat, but somehow you know that you need to go back to sleep anyway. Everything will be fine if you just go back to sleep. What the? Yep. Yeah, you think you're hallucinating when the cat finally stirs. It stretches langidum. I don't know how to say that. Before hopping off your back. You hear its feet paddling through your still open bedroom door. Its steps fading down the hall. So can we get up now? You don't even open your eyes. You don't move. Oh, it casts a spell on me. I can't fucking move. Are you serious? You're afraid you don't even remember how. You're afraid that the stack will return if you try. But you eventually do try. Uh, When is eventually? You try to plop, prop yourself up on your arm. It's thinner than you ever seen it. Thinner than you think it should be possible. The arm snaps under the weight of your body and crumbles to dust on the bed sheets. The f it doesn't hurt in the slightest. As even your nerves have dried up. As if even your nerves have dried up and become useless as, as well as you feel in general. Just how long have you been lying in this bed? You don't have much time to think about it. You failed attempt at sitting up sends you tumbling over to the side of the bed like a rag doll. And then there, there's all your other body parts. But you you think you're possibly probably closer to be, being a ser, serum whatever doll as your body shares instantly upon impact with the floor your head rolls through the door letting you watch the rest of your strong body parts crack and crumble and turn into broken ruin as your consciousness begins to fade I can't even believe and there's the cat the cat strolls into view then poking and prodding at the remains of your brittle limbs bad kitty you try to say but you think your jaw might have snapped off earlier as well. Almost as resenting your intention, the cat walks over to you. Well, well, your head at least. And you watch as your final conscious seconds as it lays down, curling its body around you. And you just do that. Are you freaking serious? It feels warm. Well, maybe another nap couldn't hurt. I think it's hurt your whole body. Ending six, just a cat nap. I I can't even. But this is this is getting juicy, juicy. I can't even stop. We we doing this whole thing today, and I don't care if this takes two hours. All right, we're gonna watch a movie. We're gonna watch a movie. You're not tired enough for a nap, but you're too lazy to get started on any of your chores. So you decide to watch a movie. You get dressed in your favorite pajamas, make some popcorn with an obscene amount of butter, and head over to your armchair. Only to discover that the cat is already fucking in it. You frown a little in thought. Your couch isn't the best angle for optimal TV viewing pleasure, and you don't feel like pushing around and having to put it back later. The only options you have left are to sit on the floor or move the cat and reclaim your throne. And what do we do? We claim the fucking throne. You square your shoulders. Sorry, kitty, but that's my spot. You pick up the cat and place it on the floor. I don't care if you get mad, it's clearly upset with you. When you try to pet it as an apology, it dodges your hand and scampers away. You shrug and put a random movie before nestling into your chair. It's some horror film that you love to heckle 
from beginning to end. Nothing but an endless string of pointless jump scares. Did the writers not know the meaning of the word subtle? Oh, what is you doing? You getting that upset that you're crashing into shit? What was that? Was that the bathroom? The cat must have gotten into the medicine cabinet or knocked something over. Calming your thundering heart with a deep breath, you pause the movie and get up to investigate. Oh, where's the cat? Whoa! The cat dashes between your legs from the hall. Fling the scene only makes you look guiltier, you know. You're even more reluctant to see the damage now. You just want to relax and watch your bad horror movie. You go into the bathroom and turn on the light. Just as you thought, all the stuff in your medicine cabinet is scattered on the tiles. You sigh. At least none of it looks broken or damaged. You crouch down to pick everything up. Click. Did, did the door just close? Did you bump it when you crashed down or... Uh oh Well, at least the cat can't come in and make more of a mess. But it can do that? The lights? Didn't you just replace the light bulbs? They weren't faulty, were they? You never remember to hold on to your receipt for situations like these. You doubt you'll be able to get your money back. Oh boy. This is not, that's not something. Don't you understand, like, if it flickers like, I don't know. You stand up. You shake the pain in your knees from crouching. Open your medicine cabinet. Carefully, you place everything back where they belong, making sure nothing is missing. You close the cabinet. Now I would come on now. You jump back, slamming against the wall, covering your mouth. You look up at the mirror on the medicine cabinet door to see the cat. Nothing. What? What the? Something was definitely there. That damn cat. You know you saw something just now. You know you did. Right? You definitely saw something. Come on. You rush out of the bathroom and slam the door behind you without looking. You enter the hall and... No. What is it? The fucking cat. No, no, no! You shield yourself with your arms and nothing, nothing again. You peek through your fingers and see the eyes. Just your usual hallway. You, you don't feel very good. You need to sit down. You carefully make your way back to the dark living room. Try not to overwhelm your senses any more than you already have. Maybe you should watch something a little more lighthearted. Or just lie down instead. You don't know. It's a little hard to think. You just need to sit down. Stumbling forward, you reach your chair. But... Hmm? This damn cat is sitting right in there. Get your bitch ass up, bruh. It's nothing. N nothing at all. Just a cat sitting back in your chair again. Looking at you curiously. Like you're not sitting in my damn chair. What the... Why is it doing that? But it's enough. Your heart lurched so harshly out of mixture of fear and anticipation that it completely gives out? What? Your eyes roll up into your skull. You feel yourself falling back. Really? You're dead before you even hit the ground. And it <laughs> Ending four. Real subtle. There are some bitches for that. Even at the end where it says ending, they, I, they got me. Okay, this time, let's just not, you know, try to reclaim our throne. Because our heart gives out from, from all that. So let's just sit on the floor. We decide to sit on the floor. The cat is a guest after all. And you pride yourself on being a good host, if nothing else. Well, at least you would if you had any guests over before. You grab a blanket and some pillows and make a comfy nest in front of the chair. It can have it. You pop in a random movie from your collection and can tell instantly that it's one of your favorite horror films. You've seen it a few times already, but it never fails to get your blunt puppy. A few minutes in, you're already invested, getting reacquainted with story and characters. The scares won't come till later, but for some reason, you feel like something is watching you from behind. Did you forget that cat is there? You know it's probably nothing, but you feel compelled, compelled to check anyway. You peek over your shoulder. 
I mean, not that I didn't expect the cat to be there, because, you know, just because it's sleep for one minute doesn't mean it can't get up. Gah! Only jump out of your skin, jostling at the few pieces of popcorn out of the bowl in your lap. The cat is awake and is looking right at you. Why, though? I let you have my chair. <sighs> you take a calming breath, recovering from your heart, nearly lurching out of your chest, and imme immediately feel foolish. It was a cat, of course. It was so quiet that you'd forgotten it was right behind you. Like you weren't just sitting on the floor. Even though it's the whole reason you were sitting on the floor in the first place. You shakily pick up the remote, intending to rewind some of the parts you just missed. However, as soon as you press the rewind button... Again? The TV shuts off. What the hell? You blink, confused. Nothing else turned off. The kitchen's dim light was still on. The digital clock was still glowing, and the movie player was still rewinding. The power clearly didn't go out. So why? You feel a chill run down your spine as you feel it catch the cat's reflection in a dark TV screen. It's still looking at you. Cats stare, silly. It's kind of their thing. Right? <laughs> and you're a new addition in its life. Of course it's going to study you closely to see if you're trustworthy. As you mentally reassure yourself, you turn the TV back on. And then this happens. What? The TV's on, but... The movie isn't what's playing on the screen. It's... What? It's you. Oh, that shit's creepy as hell. You watch yourself frown on screen as you feel your brow furrow in tandem. It's like footage of you in real time, like you're being recorded. That's creepy. You feel the sensa familiar sensation of your mind focusing on small details to avoid the bigger picture of your current situation. Avoiding the questions on how this is even happening, of who or what is doing this, and why. Suddenly, your mirror itself smiles and waves at you, all on its own. As if this couldn't get crazy enough, you don't wave back, too stunned to move. Then you, the you on the screen, doesn't seem to mind though. It then stands up. It walks out of frame. And... Ah! A terrified yelp rips out of your mouth before you can think to stifle it. On the screen, in the chair, is the cat. But but it's wrong. Huh? It's become a large swollen mass of black fur. It's switching pulse. Are you sure that's... Hold on. I'm not even going to read that now. Are you sure that's wrong? Look back. Look back. That's what you could do. Its mouth is a yawning entrance to a black abyss, framed by a set of teeth that look very sharp, very sharp. Glowing eyes bulge all over its body. It's, it's still looking at you. It doesn't even acknowledge your on-screen persona as they walk back into frame and pet it almost lovingly. Then the you inside the TV touches one of the cat's fangs and yeah you flinch at a sudden sharp pain in your palm you look down and sure enough your hand is bleeding so wow so it's 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 doing that that shit well whatever it's doing is hurting him i hate that shit i've seen a couple things like that before you're not particularly afraid of blood but for some reason the sight of it leaking out of you sends another chill down your back a thought clear and terrible flashes across your mind it's not just the mutated cat in the TV that's watching you, is it? Don't look behind you, don't look behind you, don't look... You gotta look behind you. You watch helplessly as your on-screen self smiles and nods at you, almost encouragingly. They stand in front of the cat's gaping jaws. They look into the dark depths. And as you're torn between the horrifying realization of what's about to happen, and the gripping wonder of what they see looking back at them from the deep, deep darkness, Da, da, da. They jump in. Oh, we're dead. Darkness is all a sudden present all around you. Pressing in. Holding you down. And yet you somehow feel weightless. You can't tell if you're falling, but it doesn't feel like you're laying down or standing either. You feel warm. You feel cold. You feel everything. You feel nothing. Da, 
that time. You feel nothing. Ending three, silent film. Oh my gosh. How many of these endings did we do already? 29? There's still 11 more endings. Now, I, oh my gosh. Clean apartment. That's what's time to do right now because everything else we did. You decide that even if it's your day off, that doesn't mean you should be completely unproductive. You know that you have a guess and all, but you really shouldn't put off your chores. Best to get them done while you're in the mood to do so. So for now, you'll get dressed, roll up your sleeves, and get to work on cleaning the apartment. What's the cat gonna do? He's gonna get the hell out of my way. At least, you try to. You sweep the living room. You wipe the kitchen counter. You, okay, you don't move, you don't make your bed. But who actually does that anyway? <laughs> Still, you notice that no matter how much you clean up, you keep finding more messes than when you started. What the? You peek over at the cat. You suspect that it might be a culprit behind this mystery. But every time you rush to check in or catch in the act, it's sitting there like that. You always find it napping in the living room. We already know this cat has some mind power, so... I'm not blind to that. You keep cleaning, but the cat, or something, keeps leaving more and more mess in its wake. Just, you know, keep, let's kind of catch this bitch in the act. How are you supposed to finish cleaning up if this little imp is making a menace of itself? No. You know the cat's the culprit. You consider locking up in the bathroom, or at least until you can clean the rest of the apartment. But that just doesn't seem fair when you don't actually have any proof. You need to investigate this further. You need proof. Not just for the sake of your sanity, but more importantly for the sake of cleanliness. You start to clean again and peek behind you, catching mirror glimpses of a paw here or a tail there. But as with earlier, when you rush back to the living room, the cat is still sleeping. Okay. You wanna play, huh, cat? Then let's play. This time, you decide to lay a trap, one your feline friend won't be able to resist. You tackle the kitchen can counter and give it the works. That's the kitchen can. Kitchen island. <laughs> it's glistening by the time you're done. It's so clean, you drop kick anyone who even thought of eating off of it. The perfect trap for your little cleaning saboteur. You whistle innocently as you exit the room and hide behind the corner of the entry to the hall. From the angle you're at, you have a perfect view of the cat and the island counter. There's no way you won't catch the culprit in the act now. If it really isn't the cat, maybe you'll give it a treat as an apology for your suspicions. But as you deliberate if you should stop to buy the grocery store to get some fish, the cat starts to... Shift? It's back that was rising and falling evenly moments ago. It's now ripping in small tremors like an agitated wave on a black sea. It's shuddering. It's bubbling. What? It's bulging. It's... What? Are you... What the hell? You gape in disbelief as another cat bursts out of the still sleeping feline you had taken home with you. So, what? You're fairly certain that's not how cats give birth. But more importantly, you watch as cat number two shakes itself off before leaping up onto the counter, rolling around on top of it, leaving fur and grime in its wake. Hmm, probably shouldn't have gave it a bath, should have gave it a bath earlier. You feel like your mind is lagging behind the reality of the discovery you just made but you don't seem capable of thinking behind smaller observations. For example, though the highs and hows and whys of what you're witnessing elude you, the more pertinent question that strikes you is that if the original cat is still sleeping and the clone cat is busy yet making another mess, where are the other clones? Oh my god, that is... Oh. Alright, y'all 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 gotta stop this shit. Suddenly the two cats look directly at you in perfect unison. I, I, their eyes pinned you to the spot with their intensity. 
what you want. But you realize with the familiar sinking feeling of being watched from behind that they're not the only ones looking at you. You slowly turn around. How many more is behind me? What? Are you kidding me? Packed in the hall behind you, from the floor to the ceiling, is a living, breathing, writhing wall of cats, of clones, all piled on top of each other. The glowing golden eyes of every cat, an undulating wall of pure black fur. Every single eye is trained on you. Out of fear and the sheer desperate need to distance yourself from this blight and reality and order, you take you decide you take a single step back. I don't think that's gonna work. And in response, the wall just breaks. The cats all stampeding over you. Yeah, we're dead. It'd be kind of cute if they weren't doing this, if their soft paws weren't hiding claws as sharp as knives. You try to protect yourself, but there's just too many of them. Ble blood leaks steadily from your scratches. You feel dizzy. With that little strength you have, you turn your head and watch the cats tear, tear through carpet and ho hold street. Knock over vases and dishes and lamps. Claw at the walls. It's going to take forever to clean this up, you think. Maybe you'll tack at it, tackle it all again later. Right after you take a short nap. You ain't getting up. With an annoyed sigh, you breathe your last breath. Ending two. Double trouble. Bro, this is... Oh my gosh. That cat still is creepy. Alright, let's try to keep cleaning. You keep cleaning, but there's just more mess. And more. And more. When you finally stop and look behind you. Is it the same type of cats? Is it? No. You don't even recognize your home anymore. There's piles of junk everywhere. Do you even own this much stuff? You don't remember even buying or receiving most of this. The piles tile over you. You feel claustrophobic. The stench of garbage is overwhelming, despite your hands feeling raw from all the cleaner fluid you've been using. Your eyes still burn from the bleach. You need some air. You need to get out of here. You hear a crash and you see a teacup. You're certain you didn't move a suit you don't own smash on the floor. Look at that bitch smiling. That's what his eyes look like. He's smiling. Look up and see the cat perched on a teetling pile of china and the kitchen appliances. It carefully nudges another teacup on the pile, sending it carrying to the ground. Bitch! But you don't even flinch as it shatters. Instead, heh, you start to chuckle. <laughs> Suddenly you're laughing. It's so hilarious. <laughs> the tears start running down your face. I knew it was you. You did this, didn't you? You pick up the largest piece of ceramic from the broken teacups, didn't you? And throw it at the cat. The cat dodges by leaping it off the pile. Uh oh, the pile sways. It's gonna fall. It sways. It's falling. On. T it's falling towards you. Yeah, I knew it. You can't move. You're buried. The pile fell on top of you. Broken shards of fine china and sharp utensils are piecing your skin. Your organs. Your bones feel loose and limp. Crushed under the heavy appliances. Warm liquid pools all over under you. With the last of your strength, you listen as the cat pads over you before laying down and purring sleepily. This bitch. I can't believe you. Yeah. A nap sounds pretty good. I don't think you have a choice. Ending one. A not so clean getaway. Okay. Hold on, because now I'm confused. 31. Where are these other endings at? Let me see. If I try to stay with him. It's strange. The more you hesitate to leave the alley, the more you find yourself wondering. What's the point? He'll go where? 
do what? What's the point of when you're always doing all of it completely and utterly alone? Even going home to your apartment wouldn't help, would it? One bedroom, one bathroom, and one you living alone in it. It's been like that for so, so long. So long. Oh, you're startled when you feel an impossibly soft paw pressed lightly against your wet cheek. This is different. You didn't realize you'd been crying. Or that little breakdown had nearly brought you to your knees right in front of the cat's box. You feel slightly embarrassed, but the cat responds as if it can sense your self-deprecating feelings creeping in. Oh, but then you're getting mad. I don't get that. It presses the paw on your cheek three times in quick succession, as if trying to slap you out of your melancholic state. I don't know how to say that. I didn't say it right. But they're so light. The slaps from the floor like, like getting gently and eagerly patted. <laughs> you can't help but laugh a little. Can't believe I'm having a meltdown in a dirty old alley with a stray cat confronting me. You smile and show your gratitude with a scratch to the cat's chin. Thanks. I I'm fine, really. This just happens sometimes. Now? I really do like being alone most of the time. It's the only time I feel comfortable being myself, you know? But even I get lonely every now and then. It's easier to ignore when I'm keeping myself busy. That's why I push myself to go out today, I, I think. <laughs> or maybe I was hoping to make a friend or something. But I guess that wouldn't be a good idea. I doubt someone like me would make a very good friend to anyone. It's like, shut up, what are you talking about? Now, okay, okay, maybe I wouldn't go as far as to say that, but... Da, da, da. You stay. And just talk to the cat. About anything that comes to mind. Your isolation. Your loneliness. Your many fears. Your losses. Your emptiness, what was that? Although, the longer you stay there, the smaller that one significant emptiness feels. It's been so long since someone's just listened. Your words shift to gentle topics. Your hopes. Your dreams. Happy memories of the past. What is that? As you talk, you don't even notice the once cold concrete walls of the alley becoming flesh-like, warm and pink, and softening slowly engulfing the both of you. The sound of your own voice feels hypnotic if it reaches your ears. I encourage you to speak more and more of the depths of your heart into the open. You give in easily. When you do run out of words, you're not sure how long you've been sitting there. But not knowing doesn't even seem to bother you. Still, a strange question that enters your mind. Leave and go home? At this point, I don't think that's an option. Dot, dot, dot. Why would I want to do that? Oh, we're stuck here now. You're too tired to move. Pouring out your heart and soul has taken a surprising toll on you, but you have no regrets. You're so happy. You don't think you've ever felt so heard, so seen. You lean forward and rest your head on a box. You don't even feel the rough car bar you were expecting. Instead, you find yourself resting on a mass of something. Something soft and slightly damp and warm. So, so warm. But you can't fight it in you to care on what would it be. You're so tired. You close your eyes. And you get the feeling that they'll probably never open again. Huh? But as all that encompassing warmth in case you slowly, completely, dot, 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 you feel nothing but pure contentment. Ending 22, not alone. Okay, well that's one of the endings. I didn't even see this, so I freaking went back to the whole puppy thing and that quick choice thing is to drop it or hold on. I picked drop it. Terrified, you drop the puppy to the ground, practically throwing it from you. You feel immediately horrible, winting and guilt as a tiny yelp it releases upon hitting the ground. The owner shoves you aside with a cutting glare and storms away with their puppy. I, I you know, I, I can't even fault you for feeling like that. I, I'm sorry. You call out, but they don't turn back for a second. Not that you expected them to. You deserved it. Well, you're not feeling so great about being in the park at the moment. Maybe you should leave? 
Uh oh. I left the park. Dot dot dot. Good. What? Good what? Bitch. Alright. This is what happens when you feed the cat. I thought I did these already, but I don't think I did. The cat looks hungry, so you decide to feed it. You're regretting not shopping for food earlier, as you don't have much left. Grocery shopping day is tomorrow, after all. You head to your kitchen and click your tongue, ensuring the cat follows after you. It leaps nimbly into your kitchen counter and watches as you search for meal options. Hmm, let's see. You find some things you expect. A can of tuna in the pantry. Some leftover, leftover meatloaf in the fridge. And... Huh? What's that? You realize there's a tightly sealed Tupperware in the bottom shelf of the fridge. Dot dot. You don't recognize it. A foul odor is leaking from the container. Whatever's inside can't be safe for human consumption. But it seems like that cat is meowing for it. Cat seems excited about it. Practically salivating over it. Still, you're the caretaker here. You're the one who just needs to decide what's best to feed a hungry cat. So you'll feed it. You know what? Let's try that mystery food. Dot dot dot. Is this really a good idea? Probably not. But any of the stuff we've done, even if it was a good, good idea, has turned out to not be a good idea. Dot dot dot. Ugh, fine. I guess if this is what you want. You open the container in. Oh my god. Why do you even have this in your fridge? What is this? You just barely managed to keep from throwing up. But just barely. The stench is overwhelming. <laughs> Ugh. But the cat's meowing. Y yeah, j just give me a minute. You, you're, you hazard a look at the contents of the container, but... What? You honestly can't understand what you're supposed to be looking at. Everything is just... Mashed together. What exactly everything consists of is a more of a mystery you're more than happy to keep unsolved. Different shapes. Different sizes. Different textures. Dot, dot, dot. Not, to the, not the color, though. All of it is the same color. The most unfortunate shade of, looking shade of gray you've ever seen. Tinted with a nauseously wet green film over the top. <laughs> Ugh. A am I supposed to warm it up or... You don't really know how to serve it. Any utensil or plate that touches it is getting thrown out immediately. No exceptions. Your hands are going to get scrubbed with soap and hot water to within an inch of their lives after this. You decide against putting this crap back in your microwave. I said back in. You doubt whether it would taste or smell any better warm. Not wanting to hold anymore, you shake your head and practically toss the container next to the cat on the counter. The cat in in enthusiastically dies for the toxic looking sludge, sniffing as if savoring the scent. You turn to the fridge and close it. You've lost your appetite. You're about to head into the bathroom to wash your hands for the next hour or so when... That cat is really eating that. Oh my god. What? Ow! How? I thought you were over by the contem- A sharp pain on your foot causes you to stumble. You catch yourself on the kitchen sink and look down to see the tip of your sock is... Red. How? And the red is slow, still slowly spreading to the rest of your sock. Are you bleeding? You quickly reach down and pull off your sock to see the damage. What? What? Your middle toe is gone. How? What is he eating out there? Just a stump left in his place. Steadily leaking blood onto the floor. Ah, ah. You clumsily step back as if it would help you get away from what you were seeing. The blood trail simply follows your movements. 911. You have to call 911. Where's the... Oh. Can't do that now. <coughs> oh, what, what? Your tongue is. What? What's happening to me? You slowly look over to find the cat still eating, completely unbothered by your suffering. It's really munching at that nasty shit. Not bothering to try to stop the blood from dribbling out your mouth. You keep watching in days as a happily happy chews at a gross piece of. Wait, that's. You look, more look, you look more closely at the mystery food in the cat's jaws. It looks vaguely familiar. It looks like a tongue? Ah! 
before you can even think to do anything to stop it, the cat delves into the container again and bites into a piece that looks kind of like a... Ah! You collapse to the floor, clutching your torso. You writhe around in blood-soaked tiles, crying. Something something inside you just... Ugh. Blood pours out deep with... So, he's, so the cat's eating him. I, I don't know how that's supposed to work because... I, I don't know. Whatever that was felt important. And now it's probably gone too. It hurts. It hurts so much. So, stop, stop, uh, please. You weakly try to reach up the cat on the counter above you. Your vision blurs from the effort, from the pain, from your tears, from, yeah, from, ugh. Uh, your eyes, your eyes. You fall limply back into the floor, to the floor. You're leaking blood all over, from all over. Your foot, your mouth, your insides, your eye sockets. You can feel your life fading away too. Yeah, it probably is. That's fine. If it means not feeling the pain of losing another part of you, then... What? Hopefully the cat will take his time eating your eyeballs and give you time to just... Just... To just die? Ending 10. You are what you eat. Oh my gosh, bro. What the hell? Alright, let's try this. Let's try this uh, meatloaf. You get the feeling the cat won't be too impressed with anything that comes out of a can. And you're not about to feed it whatever the heck that toxic looking sludge is. We found out what the hell that is. <laughs> so it's settled. A tuna sandwich from you and leftover meatloaf for your feline guests. You ignore the cat's disappointed meows as you put the weird container back into the fridge to dispose of later. You warm up the meatloaf in the microwave. Dot, dot, dot. Oh. Okay, I guess I guess it's done. You place the now warm meatloaf in a saucer next to the cat on the counter. You don't think you should be encouraging it to eat up there. But you'll figure it'll make up for not electing to, to feed it the toxic goop it wanted. <laughs> He's like, why? I don't want it. Look, the cat looks like... Looks like it finds the meatloaf interesting. Works for you. Eat up, kitty. We'll see if he does. As the cat digs into his meal, you go about searching for some bread for your tuna sandwich. You're so distracted by your search that you only just barely hear... Hmm? You turn around and see that the, the meatloaf has only one, maybe two bites taken out of it. But more alarmingly, there seems to be a red trail of something leading away from the, where the cat had been sitting and off the edge of the counter towards the living room is is that blood from the meatloaf really how and that cat is just eating i know that's the cat you jump at the strange sound coming from around the corner further into your apartment you attempt to steal your nerves taking the breath you walk around to the counter and head into the living room Huh? What? You stepped in something warm and wet and red. You resist the earth to vomit and step away from the trail of... of... You follow the trail into the living room and see that it leads into the hall. It's still eating that. It's getting louder. It's definitely in the hall. Dot, dot, dot. You feel like you can hear your heartbeat. You hope whatever it is in the hall can't. Your body shakes as you feel yourself step forward, and forward, and forward, and forward. You peek around the corner. What? Nothing. There's nothing there. What? You walk further into the hall and see that the trail leads all the way down to the end of it. But there's nothing there. You don't quite feel relief, but at least... What? You feel something wet and warm drip onto your cheek. What? Something very warm. You swipe your shaking hand across it and pull back to see your fingers covered in something. What the hell is going on? Excuse me? <laughs> you look up and see what can only be described as meat. The entire scene in the hallway is covered in thick... Undulgent, writhing layer of pulsing meat. 
and the setter is a single glowing eyeball, frankly rolling around in every direction. The fuck? Until it lands squarely on you. Ah! You try to take a step back, desperate to escape the hallway, to escape this thing. But, yeah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Before you can even scream, meaty tendrils will shoot out and grab you. N no! Let me go! They pull you up, and up, into a pair of slowly opening jaws. All this for open for eating meatloaf? Chomp. Ending nine, leftovers. So for eating meatloaf, that's this is what happens. This is some bullshit for real. Now this is the tuna. The last feeding option. I think that's the last one I think I know that we have to do, but we probably are missing something. Cats like fish, right? Struggling. You take oh wait, oh I can go back. You take the tuna out for the cat and a meatloaf for yourself. You put the frankly ominous container back in the fridge. The cat looks a little disappointed. Don't give a fuck. Tough. <laughs> you need to dispose of that weird whatever it is later. You open the tuna and spoon it into a small saucer. You put the saucer in the kitchen counter next to the cat. You don't think it should be encouraging it to eat up there. But you'll figure it'll make up for it. Oh, I saw that. The cat looks like it finds the tuna acceptable. You'll take it. Eat up, kitty. As the cat takes his meal, you hit a, hit a move off in the microwave. While setting the time, you hear a hiccup. I didn't think hacks a hiccup. You turn to see the plate is completely empty. Whoa, that was quick. You need, really need to pace yourself. Uh-oh. Okay, maybe we need to do some Heimlich maneuver on a cat. I don't know how that's possible, but it's hiccuping. The... You watch baffled as the cat continues to hiccup, causing little bubbles to fly out his mouth. Ew. Okay. Th that's okay. You can you can process this. It's not completely out of the realm of what's possible, right? R right. Best not try. Best not to think too hard about it. <laughs> Soon enough, the room is full of the floating bubbles, and it's still hiccuping. The cat releases a final tiny bubble before yawning and laying down there on the counter. And it's death purring. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. The bubbles haven't left the room or popped. They seem to be pretty resilient. Wait, what? What's that? As one of the bubbles float closer to you, you see there's actually something inside of it. A tiny, furry fish? How do you hiccup that? This is just getting weirder and weirder. Still, you can't help but marvel at the impossible wonder in front of you. You lift a hand. You extend the finger towards the bubble. Carefully, you press it against the surface. Oh! The little fish inside lashes out, viciously sinking tiny fangs into your finger. You shouldn't have done that shit. Doesn't really hurt that much at first, but then. It's gonna keep doing it. What? Wow, what? Pain starts to climb from your finger to the rest of your hand. Past your wrist. Could it be some kind of venom? You fling your arm around and attempt to dislodge the fish, but... Oh, yeah. Oh, we're dead. Gah! You accidentally knock your arm into several of the bubbles floating around. More tiny ravenous fish lash onto your flesh. You stumble back out of pain and a sudden, sudden bowl of dizziness, only to bump into more bubbles. More fish digging your teeth into your back. Gah! Ugh. It hurts. You're getting dizzy. You've got to get out. You deliriously try to stumble out of the kitchen. The entire room is full, filled with deadly bubbles. By the time you collapse to the ground, you're absolutely covered in tiny, angry, biting fish. Your legs. Your torso. Your arms. Your face. Is that all gone? The pain is unbearable. You can feel it in your skinny teeth, and your eyes, and your hair, and it's so consuming that you can't even feel yourself convulsing or crying. You don't even black out. Your eyes are still warming up to your skull, and you gas up with your last breath. Ending eight, fish out of water. Well, that covers that, but now I'm confused on what do we have left. 35, we have five more endings. Okay, I figured out that now 
cleaning the cat, there was another option. I think we did quickly last time, so now we're going to do carefully. You think careful is the way to go. Cats aren't exactly fond of water, so you doubt I'd be a fan of an excessive amount of it. So you pick up the cat and place it gently in the sink before turning on the water. It still doesn't like it. The cat is startled, but ultimately doesn't even try to run away. Nice. But one of the... Oh, wait. So it, oh. You lather your hands with some soap and carefully get the cat a thorough half scrub, half massage. After a few minutes, you rinse the cat completely and gather it up in a blanket, drying it. Then you take a brush and carefully run it through the cat's fur. Likes that shit, doesn't it? The cat seems like it's in heaven as you brush it. Some hairs are sticking to you, but you don't mind. Really? You sure? In fact, quite a lot of fur is sticking on you. You try to brush it away, but it won't come off. Guess you're up for a bath yourself. Uh-oh. You try to ignore the fur and flesh with the cat quickly, but more hair keeps sticking to you. Your hands, your arms, before you realize it, they're covered in fur that won't come off. It's thick enough that you try to just yank it off, but... Ow! What? Pain lances through the spot you tugged at. Upon closer inspection, you see that the hair is growing. Growing out of you. Just for bathing the cat carefully, you can actually feel it now. Fur growing out of your back, your neck, your face, your eye, ew, your eyes, your tongue. It's even growing inside your throat. Oh yeah, we're done. <laughs> yeah. Oh. As you collapse and start to choke on the thickening fur in your esophagus, the cat leans up to lap at the fur growing on your forehead, grooming your hair as you thoroughly did for it earlier. This is some type of game to you? You'd think it'd be sweet if you weren't cur currently losing air. Still, feels nice at least to be looked after and cared for in some way, even if it's just for a little while longer. The cat's careful grooming is the last thing you feel before you're no longer able to breathe. This is so freaking dark. Self-care buddies? Are you freaking kidding me? You call that self-care? Oh, I just wanted to continue. Oh, we got more. You've been enjoying yourself, haven't you? No, I haven't. All these endings are just ending up with me dying. Yes, I as well. Who are you? Still, all good things must come to an end. And I believe you are ready. Ready for what? Huh? What the hell is he talking about? Oh, this is... <laughs> oh, we almost there, y'all. All right, I don't know. I'm just going to see if I can not take the cat home. Yeah, because there was another option that was, you know, uh, I keep doing that, that was question marks. He said, I feel like you're ready. Because it said you were not ready when I kept pushing it. Let's see if that actually... Yeah, shut up. <gasps> you are ready. Oh. <laughs> Am I ready? This is, it, it, I know this is a long video, but I don't care. Are we ready? Oh, shoot. I think we're ready. Evie, you ready? I think we're ready. Alright, we're ready. Only one thing left. So, what should you do with a cat that has been very, very, very naughty? <laughs> Hint? Yeah, let me, uh... Very, very no. That's my hint? I need another hint than that. Something it deserves. Something final. Nope, I need something that ha has been doing to you this entire time. Oh, you could have just said that the first time. Over and over and over again. Oh, no, I'm following that one. You could have just told me. It's been killing me this whole time. Got it. All right. Come on. Spell it out. I'm not. <laughs> I like this. Boom. Kill it. Kill it. It's been killing me over 40 times. Well, 
over 30 something times because we haven't gotten to 40 endings yet but kill it let's kill this bitch oh, and that's the so this is this is <laughs> this is it huh kill the cat I'm I'm not hesitating to do that come on what you got final battle really are you sure it's been killing me this whole time which mean maybe not once you do this, you won't be able to turn back. Change my mind? What happens if you do change your mind? Wait. Oh, it just goes back to that. Man, get the freak out of here. I'm... Yeah, I'm sure. If this maybe not, it's the same thing, right? It is. Nope. It's time for you to die. I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. You've been doing this all the time with me. Once you do this, yep. There's no turn back. Do it. What what Shia LaBeouf say? Do it. They looking at the shard like he don't know what's about to happen. Last chance. Are you really, really sure about this? This is the point of no return. Are you sure there's nothing else you want to do? I think I did everything. No. Kill him. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> okay, I don't think that worked out right. I don't think I think he killed us. I don't think we killed him. He went to us. We didn't go to him. That was bad. You killed the cat. Oh, we did. Oh, so he just took that into consideration and said, "I'm still gonna stab you." Dang! Look at the. Oh, oh my God! Look at all that. No, it's like we spraying graffiti everywhere. Yo. This corp lays limp and lifeless, and it's now bloodstained cardboard box. Good for it. Good riddance. What would you like to do? Oh, <laughs> I have choices for what I could do? What am I going to look for? Let me check the pockets. There's no point. The cat is dead. You dig in your pockets anyway. Left pocket. String. Useless. Right pocket. Chocolate. You eat the chocolate. <laughs> You have your phone. Take a picture. No point. The cat is dead. Let me look around. Before we leave, I'm just going to see what it gives us for. What are you looking for? The cat is dead. You look anyway. You look to your left and right. Nothing but trash. You look up. The sun never reaches in here well enough. But you can tell it's a beautiful day today. It is now because our problems are gone. You look behind you. Nobody saw. Look down in front of you. Oh yeah, the cat is dead. <laughs> it's time to leave once and for all. You're done here. You turn around and leave the alley. What? At least you try to. He's dead. As you stand at the edge of the alley's entrance, you see that nothing exists beyond it. So what the freak have we been doing this whole time if nothing exists beyond victory? Just an empty black void. You turn back. Why? And you see that the back of the alley has become shrewder in darkness. You can't see a thing. What? A Approach the darkness? Let me try to leave. But there's nothing there. So why would you give me that option? I gotta approach it. With no other options, you step towards the darkness closer and closer and clo how I knew I saw claws I just saw claws he's dead this is a never ending thing isn't it how did I just get clawed up did we not just kill him your bleed I think we're doing more than bleeding I think we're just getting mauled right now why is this happening I thought this doesn't make any sense so so we die anyway you collapse to your knees the front of your body is slashed open leaking blood and guts and organs down your torso and over your lap what the hell is this don't you know that cats have nine lives Oh, wow. So you're going to play that game. 
Okay. Wait. Yeah. There's no waiting after we just killed him. Okay. How, how many times you going? Okay. I think you're, I th I think I'm dead now. He really pulled that nine live shit on me. Ending 36. Eight more left. What? Oh. Do not take it home. So not only did his face get even creepier, but now it says do not take it home. It doesn't say do not take this cat home. It says do not take it. So you're telling me this cat has never been a cat. It's been an it. Maybe that's what it was telling me when it kept saying it in red. That's the same shit. Oh. <laughs> all right. All right. Don't, don't freak out. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. But I'm a little confused now. I'm actually, a lot confused. I got so many questions, but I think it'll be answered when I hit continue. All right. Now that it says do not take it home, we're dealing with a whole nother shit now. This shit again. I never believed in unconditional love. Not even as young as I was on a day that changed my life forever. Still, I always assumed that they would come the closest to granting it to me. It's what they always say, right? The, that a parent's love is unconditional? The wounds they inflicted on my skin and in my heart had long since scarred over the day they dealt the final blow. And all it took were two little words. And what was that? Get out. <sighs> Wait, so what I'm understanding is, are you saying because they kicked you out? The day they finally turned their backs on me. Abandoned me. Dot, dot, dot. Was it, that was the day it found me. Oh boy. It offered me an unfathomable kind of love. A love that could be limitless. Endless. Powerful. All consuming. A love unmatched. So is that why we couldn't leave? Because... Of this love unconditional type shit? A love unlike anything that could exist in this world. But there was one thing that the love it offered could never be. Dot dot dot. Unconditional. Now I'm just confused, like straight up. I don't even know what the hell you even talking about, really. Where? Where am I? And so, you find yourself here, yet again. Wh what? Who said that? And where is here? I can't see anything. Why? Oh, <gasps> the cat is talking to me. Well, I mean, why am I so confused? Like, it wasn't, cause you know this cat. Is talking. I think I'm confused because the cat is talking like English, and it's like not you know doing its normal shit like meowing or I, I don't. <sighs> Let's just continue. Here is here, silly. Dot dot dot. Y you're well. Do you remember me this time? When did I forget you? You kept killing me. I never would have thought of myself as being forgettable. But I suppose there's a first time for everything. Oh, what is this like final boss? This is this is what it's giving me. That's that's the vibes it's giving me right now. Your memory slowly pieces together fragments of a moment, an encounter, a cat in in an alley. I I took you home with me, didn't I? Well we did and we didn't. There was plenty of instances of both. Correct. You were daydreaming so long, you even had me worried. Could you imagine that? Here I am, indulging a little and playing with my prey, only for you to completely zone out on me. The game's no fun when you're not present, you know. So you've been killing me for what? Because you were bored? I... No, I don't know. I don't understand what's going on at all. Hmm, curious as you are, 
I should have expected that you'd have questions. Well, I suppose you put me in a good mood enough to be generous and you hear you out. Very well. What would you like to know? Oh, we got all these questions? You're a cat, how are you talking? That's the first question. What do you mean? I've been talking to you all along. Intriguing as your imagination is, it would have ran wild without my help. I was guiding you the whole time. <gasps> my eyes are about to start watering. My eyes are watering. Look, now it makes sense because them, oh, my eyes are really watering. See, it's not that I'm scared. Whenever I finally realize something after being in, in the dark for so long, my eyes start to water. That's the realization coming out. So you're telling me all them little texts, like, you know, it's a regular text that's medium size, but then the ones that are little texts was from him? The whole time? That's how, he was he was guiding me kind of, but then he was also saying mean shit. So I don't get it. Didn't you hear me in your thoughts? That was my thoughts that he was talking me through? Okay. Yeah, because he was like, oh, who's that talking? Like where what was I thinking? That Yo. Yo. Okay, I see how this. I see how y'all do. The developers of this game, y'all, y'all just got. I just got clap it up. I know we're not done yet, but, ooh, that is some. That that is insane. Like this, <gasps> and he showed me exactly how he was talking. Dot dot dot. But but you're a cat. How are you doing this? I'm quite powerful, yes, but also not so much. What does that mean? Besides, what makes you so sure I'm a cat? Because I'm looking at you and you're a cat. But then again, when I'm taking you home and all that, you turn into many other things. My appearance? I doubt I resemble any cat you've ever seen before, right? Then what the hell are you if you're not a cat? I didn't say I wasn't a cat, now did I? Now you're just being, now you're just beating around the bush. What the fuck are you? I thought that. Wait, wait, no, not the eyes. I could be a demon. Yeah, that's what you kind of look like all these times you've been, you know, doing that face and other faces. Or a god. Or an alien from another galaxy. Well, it's not answering my question of what you really are. Or an interdimensional abomination. So answer, which one is it? Or I could really just be a cat. <laughs> Yo, he's funny. He really trying to be funny. It doesn't really matter what I am, does it? It actually does, because I'd asked you. You wanted to answer my questions, not answer that shit. Certainly, what I can do would be a more pressing matter, yes? A real cat couldn't have done all of this. Which is true, so what are you? You're really hung up on appearances, aren't you? Do you have some kind of proof that cats don't possess powers like mine? I doubt it. And you know, it's pretty rude of you to keep going on and on about what I am before you even ask who I am or what my name is. I want to know, you know what, I want to know all that shit. Okay, then what's your name? Well, I'm not going to tell you now. Learn some manners first and then we'll see. Well, maybe in your next life anyway. You're going to say, what would you like to know? Wait. We didn't even get a freaking um prompt of what his name is, like of asking him. What do you mean I was daydreaming? Hmm, it's the first name that came to mind, really. You were on the brink of death. But instead of watching your life flash before your eyes, you got stuck reliving the moment we met. What do you mean I was on the brink of death? What did I what was I dying from? Can you tell me that? You're not telling me anything I really want to know. Subconsciously coming with scenarios in which you managed to survive. Well, maybe you would have, but I couldn't resist messing with your imagination a little bit. You did just start to ignore me out of nowhere after all. You know by now how much I love attention. Your little thought experiments were rather amusing. But if I might say, you must have a pretty dull life to forgo indulging in precious memories of bygone days in favor of David dreaming about a single encounter over and over and over again. 
I've heard of regrets on one's deathbed, but this has been ridiculous. Ridiculously intriguing, that is. Or perhaps rather than regrets, I was that what you found intriguing. Am I still dreaming? Because uh, you said on my deathbed. You're lucid, I'd say. Since you finally remembered me and all, seems like you're finally ready to end this farce. Amusing as it has been. What would you like to know? Oh, you're not answering of, am I still dreaming? Where are we right now? Inside your head, silly. The real versions of ourselves are halted in time back in your reality. So I doubt much time has actually passed. How are you in my head? I don't, I'm really not understanding this. These things tend to happen in the blink of an eye after all. Well, usually anyway. What would you, okay, I know what he's doing. Why do you keep killing me? Oh, don't be so dramatic. I don't keep killing you. I haven't even killed you once yet. So what was all this dying stuff that I did? Those were just thoughts and ideas floating around in your head. Wow, wow. That I admittedly had a little fun with. So all them killing me was just you having fun? Oh, wait till I, ooh, I, I'm just not, I'm just gonna keep it going. Can you blame me? I would have gotten bored just waiting for you to wake up. You even made me kill you in the end, though. Hmm, yes. I suppose I was curious to see if you actually would. And then when I did, you actually woke up and killed me anyway. You certainly didn't hold back. You must have been quite angry with me. It's fine, though. You know what they say about curiosity, yes? Bruh. This bitch is trying to say curiosity kills the cat, like that little saying. That, that's that's some corny shit. It was my own choice. And besides, I got you back, didn't I? Oh my gosh, not the eyes. I thought we were done with this. Talk to me regular. All right, what do we like to know? What do you want from me? Hmm. Well, if we're talking about my original goals, those are a bit personal, I'd say. Dot, dot, dot. And anyway, things have changed. Right now, well, presently, I'd like to have some more fun with you. Your company has been very entertaining thus far. Given more time, under different circumstances, perhaps we, we could have even been... What? Well, all good things must come to an end. You can't truly want to spend what little time you have left in regret and delusion, right? Alternatively, I'm also quite hungry after waiting so long for you to wake up. At this point, I could go either way. Have I satisfied your curiosity now? No. No, you haven't. I just have one more question. Why me? Why call out to me of all people? All I did was call out for someone to hear me. I called out and you were the first person who came to me. Simple as that. Dot, dot, dot. Were you hoping for some special reason? Yes, because me of all people, why? I'm afraid I don't have one though. Everything I've come to like about you were things discovered after our initial counter. So there's no big reason for any of this? The reason is far less interesting than the results that came about from our interaction. I only called to satiate my hunger, but in doing so, I found something far more valuable. I know for a fact that regardless of how this plays out, I will never forget you. What do you mean? I've taken a liking to you, human. And so, I'll grant you another chance. Another choice. And oh, that's my ass. Because, oh. <laughs> this is from the very beginning where we had a choice to look back or go to him. Oh, oh, my eyes are watering again. My eyes are watering again. This is so good. This place is... I remember this. You remember this place. Being chased. Being hunted. Being afraid. So afraid. The fear that so attracted me to you. The instinctive desperation to survive. I craved it all. Oh, that's what he meant when I'm, I was on the brink of death. This? 
I guess I don't know. As am I the origin to these delectable emotions. You are already mine. But I will still permit you the chance from to accept the reality of your fate. Human, join me or perish. I'd rather die. You've killed me already. Well, technically not, but You put me through so much shit. Let's see what you got. Dot dot dot. I see. Then there's nothing left to say. So what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Resign to your fate. You finally turn around. What am I turning around to? I don't see shit. Wait. I do. Dot dot dot. It's enormous, shapeless, billowing like thick smoke in the wind. A shadow-like en entity towers above you, so high that it looks like the sky poured it down to earth. It's still pouring it, even it is unfathomable that your tiny world is even able to stand under the weight of your reality of being's existence, and that you and your fragile mind haven't fallen to ruin as well. What the... Okay, it's closing in on me. You step forward into the monstrous Miss Mayas. I don't know that. I put my hand out and you offer yourself to it. Oh, okay. Well, that's how things work. Darkness. Surrounded by pure and absolute darkness. You are very suddenly hit with the feeling of what? That you are not alone. Like you stepped into an unbearably, impossibly crowded space. Your ears even start to ring with the sensation of countless words, whispers, screams, all overlapping. But you don't actually see or hear anyone or anything. You're alone. Even as your senses lie to you, trying to make you think otherwise, you're more alone than you've ever been. Lies. 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 Listen. Listen, please. Is someone really... I can't see you. Where are you? Nothing. Nothing left to see. Only hear. Hear us. Listen. Please. Are, are you all trapped too? In this place? No place. Us, all you see, hear, feel, is us. Us and it. Oh, they know about him too? We are victims. Pray, like you. We are many, beyond counting. Our bodies go on with time. Will's left behind. Us, us, we became what you see. This place is us. Need you, need your help, help. But what, what, what can I do? It keeps doing that. It's too greedy, make mistake, ate too many. We are many, now strong. We are strong. Made it strong. But make mistake. 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 Ever. Flaw. Weakness. Then why not escape yourselves? It keeps every one of them. Too long here. Too long. One. We are one. With it. Bodies lost, minds, wills, us, all corrupted, nobody can escape. You two, you, we, it, one, all of us, all now one. But you, new, fresh body. 
still have body. Escape is possible. Because still one with it. Even just you, if escape with mind, with body. Okay, how long are y'all gonna talk? It would unravel. Lose power, lose strength, lose us. Us set free forever. Finally, escape. Help. How do I do that? Remember, it lies. Hidden in truths. Lies. Lies. Escape. Push forward. It lies. Persist. 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 Okay. You ignore their words. Why? They just told me what to do. Oh, he's telling me to ignore. Deep down you know, there's no way someone like you could win against something like it. The cat. Trying to be pointless of oh, oh, all these all these freaking a pointless effort. The hopes of these words, their wills. It would all be wasted on you. So you accept your fate. And choose to perish. Really? This is how it's going to go down? I'm ex accepting my fate? You're not sure how long it takes. But their pathetic pleas eventually grow silent. You almost wish they simply turned to insults and threats. They're, this endless silence. It bears the weight of your guilt and shame. Long after your body fades away. And becomes one. One with me. Ending what? Perish the thought? No. This this is another daydream, isn't it? Lucid again? In here? But how did you... Well, when you've been dreaming about the same day over and over, you kind of start to notice the patterns. Listen, I'm nothing special. I don't really have any friends. I don't like crowds or going out most of the time. And more often than not, I'm alone, even in my home. One bedroom, one bathroom, and one me living alone in it. It'd be easy to say that I don't have much to lose. My life is admittedly pretty boring, but it is my life. And if this is my dream, then you're not calling the shots anymore. Uh-oh. Well, he's still doing that. I don't think you understand what's going on here. No, you're the one who isn't getting it. You called me, if you remember. You're the one who needs me. Whether it's to eat me or kill me or make yours forever, it doesn't matter. I'm done here. I'm going home. You forget yourself, human. You, you ungrateful little creature. I give you my patience, my attention, my love, and you think you could just leave? It didn't I didn't have to, you know. I could have just eaten you whenever I liked. But instead, I gave you time to understand, time to accept what was happening. I gave you a choice. You an unremarkable little nothing of existence who no one would even notice was missing if I had just taken you as I pleased. Dreaming away about endless possibilities. Never having to worry about permanent consequences ever again. About choosing wrong. A little world all inside your head. I offered it all to you. I gave you the chance to join me and have it all. And you refused. Because you've given me, you gave me torture in my own head. You said you'd rather die, didn't you? And yet here you are trying to go back on your choices. Only to continue to reject me. To reject my love. So foolish. So ungrateful. Just like the others. You don't even know what you want. Another bundle of contradictions. You wish for solitude. Yet you fear being left alone. You fear being forgotten. Undesired. Unloved. Yet even though I love you and desire you. Even though I promise to never forget you. 
even though I'm the only one willing to never leave you, you still reject me. Stupid little child. I'm done waiting. You do not get a second chance. You made your choice and you will accept the consequences of that choice. What would have happened if I had picked to join him? Can we get, I hope we get to make that decision. You're going to stay here with the rest of these ingrates. Forever. Haven't you heard of changing your mind? Such a thing doesn't erase your original decision. It's just been permanently etched into reality. Do you think you're so, so important that you're above facing the truth of that reality? Oh, that was him. No. But that doesn't mean I can't do my best to make things right. I'm still here, aren't I? That means I can always make more choices, better choices. Dot, dot, dot. You gave yourself to me. You already are a part of me. This might be your pathetic little delusion, but don't you forget that I'm the one in control here, human. Oh yeah, that's right. Those twisted choices in my dreams were all you, weren't they? Yes. We, we help. We help. Winning. And Dream EXE persist. What are you doing, you useless traitors? Stop. I think it's about time I started making my own choices. Yeah, we're going to persist you. Stop. Oh, we about to have ourselves a little problem here. Oh, boy. Wait, I, I'm back in the alley. It's not here. Good. I think, I think I need to get home. Dot, dot, dot. I, uh, I stepped forward out of the alley? This is going to take some getting used to. I, I stepped forward towards the entrance of the thankfully empty alley. I'm almost out of this place. Almost home. When suddenly... Uh oh. I guess we're not out of the woods just yet. You! You're not going anywhere! Oh. Go. Wait. Am I going back? Uh. Go right. Um. Go home. What? Damn it. It overrode my choice. Where the hell do I go? I've got to escape. You know what? Fuck cats. We're going to the dog park. Anywhere but here. Go. Wait, go back. I know what happened. Go back again. Uh. Go left. I see the claw. So that's the one we, we can't go to. Uh. I just want to see what happens when we do. Where he. Uh. Yo. We're, sw we're sw swerving up. Damn. Gotta escape. Gotcha now. Where, where, where? Go right. Yo, we really dodging this man. He think he got me. I just want to see what happens when he, uh... Oh, that's what happens when we wait too long. <laughs> wow. Don't give in to it. Give up? No, we persist. Nah, let's do that again. Nah, I just want to know what happens. Alright, this is where we're at. Uh, go right. Go left. You are not so smart, are you? Go back. Get back here! Uh-oh. Ooh. We're just going down the line here. So we're just going... So we're just trying to just beat him anywhere we go. Go right. Go right. Go left. Go right. Go left. Go left. A. Go right. Go right. Oh, crap, a dead end. Stop running. Oh, okay. Almost messed up. Go left. Oh, now we can go back. Get back here. Yo, he's really trying to... Wait, so we can't go there. We gotta go to the carnival. Uh, go right. I'm trying to... Like, it's almost hard to see that. Hey. Hey. You hear this music bumping? Go back. Go back. How do I get out? No escape now. Uh, go right. Go right. Go back. Go back. Go left. Oh, he's... 
Where am I supposed to go? Go watch a movie. Oh, we didn't go to the new one. Oh. Go right. Go right. Go back. We will evade you, punk. A. A. Go right. Go right. Dead end. Where do I found you? Go back. Go back. Go left. Go left. Go left. Go right. A. Get back here. Uh-oh. Did we do it? Did, did I did I do it? Threat, tread, unraveling. Many us escape. Many free now. It's losing us. Losing strength. Your escape. Possible now. No! You are mine! We go ahead. We go free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you too, all of you, for helping me out. I will not forget y'all. I'll forget it. They were right. My choice is back. I'm going home. No! Oh boy, we're not done with this bitch. Why? I thought we were done here. Come back! No, I ain't coming back, bitch. Go right. Go. Come back! His voice sounded kind of like the... The cute... Yeah, please! He's sounding desperate now. Yeah, we still see that... Don't leave me! You're, you're sounding desperate now. I'll die without you! Well, that's too damn bad, ain't it? I'll die! Listen, you're just gonna have to die then. I'll die! We're gonna push forward. That was the only choice we had. Wait! Please get the fuck out of my face. Please. Wait. Dot, dot. He's gonna turn into a little cat behind us, ain't he? I, I'm back. Back where it all began. The alley. And in the cardboard box, at the back of the alley, is what? That cat ain't... Oh my gosh. There you are. You look nothing like the impossibly cute cat that I met. Well, what feels like a long like lifetime ago, after escaping and releasing the wills of all your victims, all that's left of you now is an inky black bob seething up at me. Dot, dot, dot. The endless hatred pouring out of your singular eye doesn't scare me at all now. Do not take this whatever home. It's not even a cat. Don't leave. You're mine. No, I'm not. You took them away. They were mine. And now they're gone. You took them away. You took everything from me. They weren't yours either. Alone. You never had to be. If you were lonely, you could have just been their friend. But you didn't want the friendship. They left because you tricked them. Kidnapped them. Hurt them. You stole their lives. Their time. Never to get any of it back. You brought this on yourself. Yeah, we're not taking the cat home. You are perfect. I'm not, though. Y you are don't need the others just need you stay with me I won't can give you anything can be everything for you no you can't you really can't you couldn't even before when you had that power you definitely can't now and even if you could give me everything I wanted and more excuse me I still never stay I, I love you no you I do so much. I love you. I love you. I love you. I, no, you don't. Stop. Maybe you do love me in some strange, screwed up way I'll never understand. But even if that's the case, it's not enough. Please don't go. I'll be good. I don't believe you. I promise. 
I can't trust you. How many times have you killed me in my own mind and shit? And tried to kill me just now? I promise. Just don't leave. Don't leave me alone. Please. I'll die. I'll die without you. I don't care. Look at his eye, got bigger. Uh oh. I don't look like you're dying. I hate you. Like you always did. Now that I can believe. <laughs> look at him, but he can't do nothing. There's nothing left to say. Bye, bitch. Fade away into the darkness that you have came from. Or into the deep pits of hell that you came from. I watch and shot it as the cat. As it. Fades away into nothing. What were you really anyway? I don't really understand. Dot, dot, dot. Goodbye. With one last glance around the alley. I turn. And do I finally go home? And leave. Ending 38. Do not take this cat home. Oh, gosh. We're not done here, though. Dot, dot, dot. Today's been surprising. Yeah. Pleasantly so. A day off that started with admittedly crummy weather led me to the old theater where I enjoyed a movie by myself but my laughter filled up the entire theater. The rain had stopped by the time the movie was over. I was in such a good mood, I hopped over to the not so new cinema. Not to watch another movie, but to play around in the arcade, earning a few high scores. With another guard in me awakened, I went to the carnival to play some more and was humbled fairly quickly. But I did manage to win a small stuffed animal at the ring toss booth. I remember that from one of the endings. It looked just like that. The design is questionable. And I freaking love it though. The rides weren't so bad either. I got inducted into a group for a bit while waiting in line at the Ferris wheel, bonding over our shared mistrust of the Cardinals game vendors. I even shared a car carriage on the Ferris wheel with a few of them and exchanged numbers before we parted ways. I don't know if I'll ever see them again, or if any of them will ever call me, or even if I have an enemy to call any of them, but having the option to do so is nice. It feels nice. Baby steps. After all, even after that tiny bit, even that tiny bit of interaction, though fun, exhausted me. So I went to recharge at the dog park, feeling rejuvenated at the sight of dogs, because cats freaking creepy. Old, young, big, and small. All running around. Happy and carefree. So is this dog not gonna do any of that shit now? <gasps> a few of the owners even let me take pictures. Yeah, today was a good day. Where Ice Cube at? I don't think about the cat, or it, I guess, all that much these days. It was hard at first. In the immediate days and weeks that followed, what happened to me was all I could think about. There were days I blamed myself, days I questioned my choices. I went back to the alley more times than I want to admit. The feeling that always went through me at the sight of that was so indescribable, so overwhelming. I'd sometimes break down and cry right where I stood. It took a while, but that eventually strange emotion became clearer and clearer until I had the courage to recognize it for what it was, relief. I've been afraid to feel it for so long, terrified to let my guard down. But that sense of relief finally returned. Relief that it was gone. Relief that I was able to live my life freely. However simply or extraordinary I wished, the ones it had imprisoned, I never heard their voices again either. But that's for the best. Living here and now, never forgetting what they did for me and what I did for them too, for now, I think that's enough. At least I hope so. And that wherever they are, they're finally at peace. I'm fighting for my own peace too. One day at a time. One tomorrow after another.
I'm just looking at the screen turning. I don't know what to say about this. Hey, finally, I head home to my little apartment. One bedroom, one bathroom, and one me living alone in it. Dot, dot, dot. Well, almost anyway. Hmm? I'm home, baby. Huh? A little kitten flails as it awkwardly runs over and meows up at me. Huh? I kneel down, looking fondly at his hazel green eye. The poor thing must have hurt and start when I found it a few weeks ago. But it certainly got his energy back after a little food and care. Wait, 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 wait. So he got a, he rescued a kitten. That doesn't remind you of it? Did you miss me? Hungry, huh? <laughs> me too. It has been a long day. I smile helplessly as his cute little face. So it has no... Let's find something to eat, okay? Wait. Wait, 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 wait. He said no a few weeks ago, so this couldn't be... Wait. I guess there is one more thing living in my home. And, at least for now, I wouldn't have it any other way. Ending... <laughs> And a another day. Y'all know I gotta clap it up. Been here for so long, two hours, maybe even longer than that. Yo, this game was off the hook. Shout out to the creators that did this, cause this is this was way more than I thought it'd be. Y'all got me sweating. I shouldn't be sweating. But I'm sweating from all this. Oh my gosh. My legs have fell asleep and all that. That, oh my gosh. Th and you, thank you for playing. No, thank you for, for making this game. I know I'm late on finishing this game, but it don't matter. Oh my gosh. The end. I'm glad to see it has ended. It was a happy ending. <laughs> Do not take it home. That bitch is gone. Wait, but what is this? Wait, hold on. Endings? Wait, I didn't even get all the endings. Because, oh, the other ending was probably if we, if we joined him. Right? Yeah, because I have to get that. I'm sorry, I have to get that. Alright, this is the last thing. Even though that was the end, I'll join you. What happens if I join him? Splendid. Come forward, my human. You step forward and pick up the cat. You cradle it in your arms, reaching up to scratch his head. I don't think I like this, though. Suddenly, boy, you start to feel sleepy. But a sudden wave of fatigue doesn't cause you to sway on your feet or stumble at all. What, what's ha happening? Shh, don't worry. You no longer need to worry about anything anymore. Just sleep and dream those sweet, sweet dreams for me. What? Excellent. With this, you will soon become a part of me. Oh no, yeah, that, I'm glad to, the, I'm glad I chose that other ending, because this was obviously the bad ending. Ending 37, forever. Yeah. So I was with him forever. Okay. Alright. That. Yep, that is how we do it. 40 out of 40 endings. I just had to go back and comply, and all it did was, you know, I, I, I was with him forever. Yeah. So, all right, y'all. Whoo! I think it's safe to say we get out of here. And I'm not pushing that because guess what happens when we push that? Oh, wait, no. Like, I'm not trying to bring this bitch back to life. No, see? Yeah, I'm not trying to bring it back to life. He can stay gone. Whoo! If you guys enjoyed this video, which I hope you did because this is a long one, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.
Peace.